Florespar can be an unpredictable city. But fluency doesn't mitigate its problems. In some ways, it amplifies them. This is why we're deployed. But we've seen better days. Just now debriefing. This mission is not complete. I only know of her. <laughs> Our lack of data collection is a problem. Valdez, I'm aware of your investigative talents. Braxwell spoke highly of you, and that's why you're on this team. Local law enforcement handles itself very well. But there are those with abilities. Some believe themselves to be good. Others don't even attempt to act as if they are. Either way, we're involved. Everyone will agree with our status. But that can be said for anything. May I remind you both we're Alpha Core, and failure is not what we do. What is up, everybody? I hope you're all uh, doing well. We are live here on my channel. This is actually the first time that I have been live uh, for about a week since I have uh, been recovering from this sort of illness. So it's a great stream to sort of return to. Um, I'll in introduce my guests here in a bit because this is a very special one. Um, kind of highly anticipated, I would say. Um, but I want to thank each and every one of you since I have not had a chance to. It's, again, my first stream back. Um, Alpha Core number one has been an incredible success. You guys have finally started getting your books this uh past week, so uh, we I've seen reviews, I've seen you guys digging it. Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett's uh great work on Alpha Core, so I do appreciate y'all. We have a few thousand people that still need to get their um orders or still will be getting their orders, so uh, be on the lookout for all of that, of course. But I appreciate each and every single one of you all that have showed a lot of love, man. This has been an incredible campaign as we uh, continue to grow this company, man. And uh, again, I'm just so, so thankful for you all. So I just had to say that before we get started, because I hadn't had a chance to really chat with you guys. Chat, we'll be reading Super Chats and all that good stuff. But I hadn't had a chance to, to chat with you all since I've been kind of out of commission. So I just wanted to make sure that I say that. But today, uh, of course, I am joined by um, uh, two great individuals man i'm excited to talk about everything that we're going to be uh, uh talking about today i'm going to first of course introduce you all to gabe you guys know gabe he's been on the channel before uh he's also of course Hello. the colorist of isom number one isom number two and isom number three he's done uh some other color work for other covers and everything um a as well so you guys know him you're very familiar with him we have some other projects that he is also a part of as well as dean that we're going to be talking about today brother gabe man how you doing i'm doing great man i'm glad to hear you're feeling better last week i heard you went down but uh looks like you're coming back so that's yeah. good i'm make, I'm making my way back you know just a little a little something something everybody gets sick i think through at least once through 
uh, on this time of the year, and then we kind of get going. What was so. it you got you got sick of winning so hard? Is that yeah? What it yeah, was, I guess or? that was what it was. Technically, maybe oh, that was what okay. what it was. Um, so <laughs> either way, though, man, I, I'm good now, or at least I'm getting there, man. And it does feel All good right. to kind of get back in the swing. Um, getting caught back up on like uh, some of the projects that we've been working on. Just been working, uh, trying to get there. I'm not caught up quite yet. Um, man, missing a week. Just holy shit! It kind of just changes so much man but uh I'm, I'm trying to get myself caught up but um again man i appreciate you i can't wait to talk about some of the projects today but i appreciate you uh coming back to the channel gate um as far as the well, thank you for having me feelings mutual man oh for sure for sure as far as the again this other guy this this other guy, right? That's that's joined us. I mean, you guys may know him definitely if you grew up in my era. To to and I told him this in person as well. You know, he kind of was our Superman, right? Uh, and that's pretty big of a damn deal uh, here. But I am joined today by the great, absolute fucking legend, by the way, Dean fucking Kane. And I had to introduce him like that because that's what he deserves. <laughs> Brother Dean, man, how you doing, man? I love that introduction. I'm gonna change my middle name from George to fucking. I like it. it. I'm, down, I'm down with that. Yeah, it is. Hey, I got tired. Of, I got all. I got sick of winning too because I was down for about ten days with that same yeah, sickness. So game's the name. Fucking's the game. <laughs> yeah, but I'm better too. So we're both. And it's not like we were hanging out together to get sick together. So uh, I'm sure everybody's feeling a little bit of something around these holidays. So. uh I feel better. I'm glad you're better. I'm real happy to be here with you. Absolutely, man. I appreciate uh, you joining us, man. We got a whole lot that we want to talk about as far as the, you know, we got to get your perspective on a lot of what's going on in Hollywood. But I'm going to go ahead and actually pr uh, put this up to have you both kind of chat about this. So, and actually, before I get going, let me put this in the pinned comment so you guys can check this out. Check. Uh, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to pin this and then we're going to go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to let Gabe kind of introduce everybody as we pull this up. Guys, This is I just pinned it to the comment. There's this project that actually Gabe and Dean are collaborating on that we want to open up with. And we'll chat about it throughout the show today um, or throughout the stream. But I want to go ahead and we got to get, get into it like right off the rip. Reason being, right, and this is what I love. I love this part of, you know, I'm all about the economics of it all. And, you know, Gabe took a significant risk here in, in, in putting this thing on his own website um, a, as well. So we have Dan Kane, all American lawman. If you want to break it down, Gabe, I mean, just pretend like nobody here knows anything about this project and what's going on. Let us in on it. Okay, well, I'm going to read you just a little synopsis in movie trailer guy voice. But uh, yeah, it was a project. Voice, um, I was working on Truth, Justice, America. <laughs> I, I, I'll do the voice when I read it. But uh, I was working on Truth, Justice, American Way. Everyone that got that freaking loved it. Dean helped me promote that. It was awesome of him to do that. And uh, in the middle of almost when I was almost finished drawing it, I this idea came across. Like, what am I going to do next? And Dean has been a, such a big supporter. And I thought, why don't I do a book with him? We have the same sensibility. So I called him up, pitched him. I said, we'll do something that's like. Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, romancing the stone, all that great 80s action adventure with the guy and the sassy girl and the bad guys. And, you know, you know, just the way we loved it in the 80s and 90s. Rambo, of course, gearing up. And uh, Dean immediately agreed. And then I kept selling him on it for like five or 10 more minutes. You know, you can talk yourself out of a sale, but I, he was gracious and he didn't uh, tell me to shut up. I realized after a while he had already said yes 10 minutes ago. So, uh, you know, I am a bit verbose. I do go on sometimes. But uh, yeah, it was a great idea. We're going to do some 80s and 90s. So Dean, uh, he came up with the character, basically. It's kind of a fictionalized version of him. Uh, we gave him a different name, Chris Tanaka. That's a name that's real special to Dean and his family history. And we just made him this awesome guy. That's it. He'll, uh, you know, he's out to uh, do good and he's an adventurer and he's got this mysterious past. So here we go with movie trailer voice. Movie this trailer thing voice. I wrote, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, let me get it. Uh, uh, you know, Dean isn't the only actor here, by the way. <laughs> I act all the time when I'm talking to my wife. Anyway, uh, Chris Tanaka, the man of action and adventure, has found a hard drive that can take down the world's most deadly international drug cartel and the corrupt politicians that helped him. 
This cartel, Los Dragones de Sangre, is headed up by the terrifying man known only as Ming. When Chris's sister, Laura, is kidnapped by Ming as a ransom for the return of the hard drive, Chris will have to go into the treacherous depths of the Mexican criminal underworld to save Laura, save the hard drive, and save the world from Ming's coming reign of terror. But Chris won't do it alone. Ming's ex-girlfriend, the seductive Veronica, will be right by Chris's side the whole way. But can he really trust her? Will Chris triumph over the forces of darkness, or will he become entangled in a web of seduction and deception, spelling his doom? The fate of his sister and the world hang in the balance as he dares to challenge Ming's deadly plan. Brace yourself for an explosive showdown that will keep you on the edge of your seat until the final heart-stopping moment. This is 80s, 90s action at its best. We love this stuff so much, and we want to bring you something amazing here. So uh, that's it. There you go. I love it. <clears throat> I absolutely love it. So you want to tell us a little bit, I mean, because the artist is 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 incredible. I know people here are going to know you as the, uh, the on, on the color side, but do you want to let everybody right. know kind of what each individual as far as uh, your artist and, and, and the uh, I guess the the part, what, what role they're playing, excuse me, in the actual project uh, versus what you, you know, have usually done. A lot of people don't know that you kind of do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I mean, my my hero in comics is like Will Eisner, and he does everything. He writes, he pencils, inks, he letters his own books and all that. So I, I do know how to do it all. I love doing that. I'd love to do more for you. The chat should tell Eric that Gabe should write and saw, draw some stuff for Rip Rippers. Anyway, um, but the guys on this team here are great guys. It's a guy, Akeon, I've known forever, and uh, he does. he's just a master storyteller. I write the scripts Marvel style. And for people out there, fans that don't know, it isn't a full script. It doesn't say panel one, panel two, panel three. He says this, she says that. It just describes the page, just what happens on this page. And then he comes up with the shots, kind of like Dean in your world of movies and television, like the director of photography, right? They have the script and then they decide, you know, it'd be good if we did this here and there. So that's what Akeon is doing. Dean collaborated on me, uh, mostly coming up with the main character, Chris, kind of telling me his morality and his character, what he's after, what kind of guy he is. And then I wrote the script and pitched it back to Dean, and he loved it. We tweaked it and stuff. And uh, we're just moving forward, and we are blazing along. Um, <clears throat> Akeon sent me up to page 80 in pencils, and I'm closing in on 70 in colors. So I'm right on his tail. So we have this thing, start shipping it out before the end of winter. That's our promise to the backers. So back us today, bigmancomics.com. And um, yeah, we should have this thing, start mailing it out before the end of winter, which is technically, I think, March like 21st or something like that. But uh, yeah, we're blazing. It's uh, it's up. You know, I advertised it as 80 pages. And then as time went and we looked at the story and this time, like, oh, we need this thing to be bigger. So mm -hmm. we are up to officially, I made some changes to the script yesterday, fixed a little stuff in act three, a little more exciting. And um we're up to 114 pages. I think that's where it is, but you're getting a lot more than 80 in this. So it's going to be amazing. So uh, I sent you guys a bunch of art. There's art here on the page. So please check this out. You will not, uh, you will not be not thrilled. You will, <laughs> you will be thrilled when you read this. You're going to love this. If you want those stories that inspired you, Indiana Jones, all that great stuff, Ghost of Archers, how it used to feel where it's really um, one thing that Dean told me was very important to him. You can confirm this, Dean, is we have the action and adventure. But we also have that wry smile that Indiana Jones has. You know what I mean? Where there's something deadly going on, and then there's a little bit of humor in the action too sometimes. And we really try to capture that fun in some of these scenes. Hugely so, important to have a little bit of fun in the right. middle of all the action. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and we have that great secondary character, Veronica, the ex-girlfriend of the evil cartel leader. And they have that wonderful Princess Leia Han Solo, Marion Indiana Jones, um, what's your name? Uh, Joan Wilder and Jack Colton from Romance of the Stone. They have that wonderful interplay between the feminine and she's, well, you know, like she's being snarky at him and he's being the tough badass. So we have this awesome little bit of sexual romantic tension between the two. It is, uh, it is like Ripaverse where it's, there's no sex, there's no gore, there's no swearing, but uh, it, it's not for little kids like uh, an adult would be bored. This is like awesome stuff, but it's wholesome in a way that you're not going to be worried about reading it to your middle school or something like that. But if you're 50 years old, you'll still be fully thrilled by it. But it was Even important to me. Huh? Even 57? 57. Right, right. <laughs> Tell us, tell us about the old days, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, that's seriously. I'll just say, read you know, the book. This was my life when I was younger. Something <laughs> like that. Right. Oh, it's it's funny that I call you Grandpa when I'm actually the only Grandpa on this stream. So, yeah. oops. Yep. <laughs> but I, I, I'm super excited for people to see this. I want 
you know, people to, 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 to get a look at it. Um, uh, the, the art is amazing. The storytelling is great. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. I know that, um, I mean, I, as far as, you know, you guys are professionals in this world of before it comes out kind of a thing. I'm more in the world of it's here it is. Here's the product. This is it. Let me tell you why it's so great and blah, 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 blah. But, um, but I mean, I, I, that's usually what we do with a film. You know, we make the film and then we go, here's what's so great about the film. Here it is. Here's a couple, you know, scenes from the film and, and go see it. And we're excited for it. Um, I don't know how to talk, you know, to do it, you know, sort of pre-sell it, if you will, which is kind of what we're doing yeah. right now. But we're getting a lot of a lot of people and a lot of attention. Uh, and I just keep talking about it anytime I can. I have my little I have my little sheets that I take with me to Comic Cons and things like that. That's that are so cool. But the art is amazing. The colors are great. Uh, I'm super proud of it. And I can't wait to get it out there. <clears throat> there you go. And the guys, again, that that is pinned on uh, in, in the comment section. So um, actually, I don't have it in the comment. No, it's pinned. Yes, yeah, pinned in a live chat. Excuse me. It's not pinned in the description. I'll make sure I get that uh, situated as well. And once the video, of course, is technically live after the stream, you guys will see all of that. You can go to bigmancomics.com if you guys want to check check this out. We'll be talking about it a little more uh, throughout the entirety of the stream. Uh, I have, of course, got to take a look at it as well. I'm going to go ahead and co-sign it, obviously. But I've got to take a look at even some additional stuff that, you know, Gabe has um, sent me as well on the book. The art is um, absolutely incredible. So you guys are going to want to take take a look at that again. Go to bigmancomics.com and you can get in on this right now. It has several different, you know, obviously you got the book itself, different covers and stuff it is you can get. But there's some merchandise that's, of course, tied to it. As you can see, people that are used to supporting those campaigns, you you, you generally expect that. Um, so go make sure you go check that out if you have not um, already. Like I said, we'll be talking about it a little more here soon um, or throughout the show stream, whatever it is that you want to call this. But there's been a whole lot of shit going on uh, in in just the just the realm of, of, of entertainment. I mean, this is kind of why we do what it is that we do, um, you know, especially with myself and Gabe and. And, um, and and what we're doing kind of alternatively in the comic book sense, um, you know, you see a problem, you identify it, you don't want to do it, you want to more so avoid it. Um, but there's that sort of this, 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 these sort of cool different things that we're able to do uh, in, in the independent circuit. But as I've talked about, and I'm sure, you know, everybody here has talked about it as well, you know, we, we, we see a lot of this weird shit happening with uh, uh, w- with Hollywood as well um, and the direction it is that it, it is going. So, Dean, I have to ask you because I know, again, the 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 audience is going to be intrigued by this. I mean, you've kind of you've been in the game for a while, so you've got to see it kind of go through. It's, it's sort of changes where now it does seem like this sort of ideologically possessed um uh institution sort of if you will what has been sort of uh of your experience seeing kind of the the direction uh that that hollywood has has sort of has sort of gone especially uh, considering that you are very vocal and you're unapologetic about who it is that 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 you are and we don't we we let me say this we do see that out of a lot of people uh in hollywood it just happens to be on the other side uh <laughs> of things but uh you know i just want you to for sure give us your your experience on this well you know it's a very weird thing eric because if you go back through time you know look at these artists hollywood they're supposed to be the rebels right the you're supposed to be the rebels you're the spoiled ones speaking truth to power you're the ones that are supposed to be fighting for everybody's rights and those sorts of things well, it's kind of gotten flipped on its head. It's gotten completely flipped around. And, you know, if you support family values, if you support, you know, Christianity, if you support good morals, if you support the United States of America, if you support law enforcement officers, you know, if you'd like to stand up for the flag of the United States of America, you're now a rebel. You're you're an outcast. You're the exact opposite of what it, what it used to be. And it's a weird thing for a guy like me who isn't, you know, you, Eric, you and I are both athletes and Athletes, it's about merit. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're black, white, green, yellow, tall, Mexican. If you can hey. run 400 meters faster than me, <laughs> which Gabe, you cannot. Um, if I'll, that can I'll happen, take you, old man. <laughs> then you should be on that 400, you know, that 800 meter or whatever, the mile relay team. You should be running the 400. You should be doing those things. It's about wow. merit. I'm an athlete. I played football forever. 
I don't care where you come from or what language you speak or what religion you practice. We are brothers on the field and we're going to do it together. And that's teamwork. And that's the stuff that I've, I've grown up living and being part of my life. My morals and my values, you know, while I have certainly done some things I'm not proud of, they've been pretty consistent and pretty solid all the way through. They haven't changed with the wind. And uh, I'm a very educated young man. I did go to Princeton. Um, uh, you know, I played football there. I ran track there. I played volleyball there. Um, but when I got into the world of, I, I grew up in the world of film and television. My dad is a director. All the kids that I grew up with, Rob Lowe, Sean Penn, Chris Penn, uh, Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez, Holly Robinson. These are all the kids that I grew up with. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to watch them hit their levels of fame. And I, I honestly, goodness, I don't think anybody's really changed much for, for, for who they were back in the day, but we were all, we all, let's could say we have some differing, differing opinions, but I'm still friends with all those guys. I couldn't disagree more with a lot of the things that Sean Penn says politically, but he's like family to me. You know, our parents were best friends, but we can have those conversations. And part of the things that's happened now in Hollywood is you can't have those conversations. And if you do something, if you do say something like, you know, uh, I stand up for law enforcement because I happen to be a, a deputy sheriff, um, then, you know, that scene is, oh, my gosh, that's that's why. How could you? You know, police are all terrible. All ACAB and all this stuff. You're like, you're out of your mind. Yeah, there's been some bad situations. There's been some stuff not so great. And, and, and we always strive to be a more perfect union here in the United States. But I mean, even look at the three of us, right? I mean, right. like, yeah, we right. couldn't look or be any more different. And we're for everything, but we are all are collaborating because we're in that same place. We want to do things of quality. We want to do things of merit. We want to do things that are frankly unwoke and straightforward. And because of that, right. we're out, we're the three of us are outcasts, which is funny because, you know, I, I think the truth is we are, the majority. I think most people have that common sense and understand people of integrity speaking their minds and holding true to their beliefs. And I, and, I, and I hope that that, well, in your case, it's already happened a lot, Eric, and you've had tremendous success. I wish you nothing but more success. Uh, fortunately for me, I have achieved a level of success where I, I'm kind of not able to be canceled. And I, and I just keep working and keep going. And I have so many projects happening. I left LA, I moved to Nevada. I'm happy as a clam. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, things have gone very well, but it's weird how the kind of the McCarthyism from the old days has, has manifested itself again. I think in Hollywood, we're going to look back at this and, and hopefully we'll be as embarrassed as we were about the blacklisting from the McCarthy days. Yeah. It, it's, um, it, it's for sure intriguing watching all this, this shit kind of unfold. And, you know, I've had, the opportunity to talk to people that have been a part of industry, Nick Cersei, you both, uh, you know him, um, and and we've discussed kind of the similar thing and how it's just the dynamics has shifted a lot, right? Uh, and it's, um, you know, if nothing else, I mean, it is affording us this opportunity for people to kind of come up uh, it, it, with these sort of alternatives uh, to to let's say the Hollywood regime. So, I mean, that's a positive out of it but i love what you bring up because i think we can all feel each other uh on this this aspect of like maybe us coming from sports kind of having a having a right. lot to do with with why we do believe in merit and why um it yeah. is easy for us to have conversations and discussions with folks that may be uh on a different side of i mean that's an inevitable thing that you deal with um especially when you're being coached right uh inevitable thing that you're going to deal with as as an athlete i mean to the degree it's just you can't really get away from that and maybe that 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 is part of it but a lot of this this sort of attitude that we see out of not just Hollywood, we, you know, Gabe and I, we experience it in, in, in comics. You know what I mean? It's sort of catty kind of weird shit that I'm I'm just being completely honest. I don't know if I'm going to ever get used to that, right? Like, it's not like, because that's not my thing. That's not my style. That's not where, 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 where right. uh, even from a cultural perspective, where it is that I, that I come from. So when I see that shit, I'm like, that stuff is weird, man. But y'all will let it, it seemingly ruin your industry uh sort of having that 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 attitude um that 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 unfortunately it doesn't really even lend, lend itself to 
building sort of a, um, a a marketplace where where creativity is even able to sort of sort of thrive. Right. I mean, I think that's why a lot of the mundane sort of experiences that you get with a lot of the entertainment that people are digesting sort of comes from that. I mean, everybody's holding these ideological guns to each other, right, and waiting to fucking cancel each other. Um, and how could you possibly do your best best work under those those particular con conditions? You're under some 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 harsh conditions. You're not going to do your best work when it's like, hell, right. I might say something and I might lose my job. I might be off of this gig or I might be out like you can't you can't possibly you act your best, write your best, do anything, your best, draw your best, whatever it may be. You can't do you do your best work under those conditions. So I think that's also why the quality itself is is also um, uh, uh, su suffering. So. Uh, uh, Dean, if you don't mind, if if you could, I mean, I can, if I can ask you just a, kind of a follow up question to some of the things it is you were talking about. Looking at kind of the landscape, and it is shifting, if you will. We do see the there's these alternative institutions that are that are giving it a shot. You know, we talked a little bit about what Daily Wire is doing and and uh, uh, what these other guys are doing, kind of in 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 this space. Do you think that kind of that is going to be the way of the future with with entertainment, like in film? And, and even in TV, not to say that like the, the Hollywood structure is going to be made necessarily completely replaced. But do you see a world where a lot of that stuff, maybe now more than it ever has in in, in modern history, thrives um, because people are simply looking uh, for that opportunity? But also the means are a lot different. Right. It's a lot more affordable than what they were in the past for people to come up with their own, you know, film and shows and whatnot. Yeah, I think. You nailed it on the head, though, Erica, because the advent of technology, the fact that, you know, we're on a podcast here that could be seen by millions of people, you know, and nobody can stop us from doing this podcast. It's there. We're having these conversations. No one's telling us what to do or what we can't say. And if people find it compelling, they're going to listen to it. Joe Rogan having his podcast. I mean, when you have that big a voice and doing your thing, uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter and showing that people were shadow banned and, oh, yeah. and that there was you know collusion with the government to shut up people if they're talking about i don't want the a vaccine or i or i question this or i question covid policy the stuff they're labeling misinformation tucker carlson getting off the air there all that stuff like you can't make you can't do project you can't dc isn't going to make dean kane all american lawman they're not going to they don't want to work with me they don't want to work with gabe you know they're that's not, not going to happen but we can do our version and still get it out to the masses Right. And if people support us and are behind us, you're Joe Rogan, you're, you're, you know, Elon Musk, you're Gabe El Taib, you're Dean Cain. We've got these projects here. You're Eric July. And that's wonderful. Technology has allowed it so that like I can shoot a movie on my iPhone, you know, and it comes down to look, Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman. I, I, Zack Snyder, great filmmaker, but watching the movie, I mean, I started falling asleep at the Batman you know, uh, go back and find it, you know, this, his character, you know, exposition. I was like, I already know all this. And then when they're fighting and the fights are great, but they're throwing each other through buildings. All I was thinking about how many people are dying in those buildings. Superman would never let that happen. But also when you, when you see a building go down, it's, it's, it's amazing, but you see 37 buildings go down it kind of lessens the effect. You got to care about the characters. You got to care what's going on. And ultimately the great thing about that is if somebody wants to make a movie on their iPhone, and they tell a story that's compelling, the whole world can see it now. And, and that allows for, for, for yeah. artists to get, their, to get their product out there. And for, for, for groups like Hollywood not to be able to control everything. Groups like Marvel and DC aren't able to control the comic book world because guys like you are out there making your own projects and making your own product. And that's the same thing here, you know, independent movies and things like that. I just think it's just getting better and better so that somebody, it takes very little money to tell a story that's compelling and that's human and, and, and could be high quality. And I love that there's more competition out there. I love that there's more places to put product, whether it's the internet, streaming, I mean, anything like that, you can get stuff out there and you kind of can't stop it from happening. And I love that. I think that's going to go a long way toward, toward fighting um, this sort of conglomerate world where, you know, everything has to be completely within the boundaries and whitewash. And this is exactly how things are going. And if you go against the, the hierarchy, then you're going to get smothered. I, I love that there's not. And I love that also that we are the new rebels. Man. Mm. We are the rebels. That's the mm. crazy thing.
Mm-hmm. We are the rebels, and we're standing up for like merit-based stuff, stuff that that everybody. The reason people want to come to the United States because there's more opportunity here because nobody cares what color, creed, race, religion. They, they you, are you coming up with a great book? You have a no. great story. Is it compelling? I yep. love it. I don't care who you are. I love this message. I'm going to support you. And that's yep. why everybody wants to be here. Right. No, nah, I mean, I'm right there with you on that. And I guess, you know, Gabe, you kind of have an interesting perspective as well, because it's similar. It's just on the on, on the more of the comic book side of things where you kind of, you know, you've done your things and you've been a pro for as long as you have. And now you're kind right. of uh, out of that out of that market. Uh, place and you, you, you are, you mean obviously been involved with us and what it is that you're doing, big man right. comics. So, how how has that perspective sort of changed um, as well for for you, right? Because you you you've done it all, right? With with doing, I mean, a lot of people don't know you've worked on some some of the bigger properties, yeah. Star Wars of the world. You've done all that shit, and and now you're doing what it is that you're doing now with the independent stuff, and you're seeing a lot of success. You're able to make a lot of. Uh, 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 money as well and do your own thing sort of what has been that experience what has that experience been like excuse me and how has if at all that that, that perspective changed now that you're kind of doing your doing your own thing well it was one of like a lot of anger and sorrow at first you have to understand i don't remember when i started drawing i started drawing in the back of my grandparents mexican restaurant on big sheets of butcher paper i have some very like vague memories like three years old maybe drawing star wars space battles And I've just always loved to draw. And then I found comic books when I was like 12 or 13 at my friend Sean's house. And I, and Jim Lee was the first, a Princeton alum like you, Dean, Jim Lee. I think he was just a few years ahead of you. He's the boss over there at DC. But I saw his X-Men comic, the famous, the best-selling comic of all time, 8 million copies or whatever sold. And I wanted to be him. I wanted to be his friend. I want to work in his studio. Long story short, I practiced my ass off and Jim Lee personally hired me. It's like dream come true. Not only do you get in the NFL, your favorite player drafts you onto the team and he's throwing you touchdowns. You know I mean? Like dream come true. Jim Lee, I have his phone number. He's taking my family out to dinner. He's given my family his Padre baseball box tickets. Like, wow. And it was awesome at first. And then like in those early mid Obama years, it's like, things are getting weird. Like, why is this character doing that? Why is he saying this? And it just, it grew and grew, grew. And, and it was, I got to the point where like, I can't help them do this. This identity politics, this woke stuff. It isn't, it's bad art. Because art is self-expression. We all know that. As an actor, Dean, you and I, Eric, as uh, comic creators, and Eric as you as a commentator, art is self-expression. And if I'm woke and I'm afraid of the cancel pigs, thank you, Mark Miller, for the term cancel pigs. Mm -hmm. If I'm afraid of the cancel pigs, I will not express myself truthfully. And it will be bullshit what I make artistically. And it was very sad to live that way. And I had to hide at DC Comics. I didn't tell them I was a liberal, but I just didn't say anything the last four years I was there. After Trump won, they lost their minds. They lost their minds after he won. They just went crazy. And they did cancel people. Like what they did to all all kinds of people, you know, that are conservative, former Mm -hmm. artists at DC and Marvel. They they can't work there anymore. We know Mm -hmm. it. And so it was a lot of anger and sorrow. But I realized, like, as a man, the most important thing to me as a man and a father and now grandfather is emotional regulation. I can have any feelings I want, but I can't listen to them if they tell me to do the wrong thing. So instead of just being pissed and angry, it's like, I got to do something about this. So I want to thank the both of you to team up with guys like you that want to make good art that's uplifting, that's super. First thing, it's got to be entertaining. And we have excellent skills, so it's entertaining. Second thing, good messages. Heroes are good. Good is good. Evil is evil. Not all this postmodern, well, he's a good guy, but he also does cocaine. Like, no, no, that's not a good guy for kids to see. So I, I want to, um, when Indiana Jones steps into the bottomless chasm and he steps on that invisible rock bridge, stuff like that stuck with me from childhood. Hmm. When I'm praying to God, like, okay, I'm leaving DC Comics. How am I going to pay my bills, God? What am I going to do? I'm going to leave. I'm going to do what you want, God, but uh, what? don't let me fall. Like Indiana Jones didn't fall. And when you, when I tell stories like that with Dean, with you, I want people to read them. And then later in their life, they're like, you know, when Dean Kane, all American lawman had to do blah, blah, blah. He was really brave. And I liked the way that felt like I could see myself doing something like that. So that's, that's how it is for me. And I couldn't be happier to have stepped out because I know a lot of pros, they're still there and they're terrified and they hate this like far left cancel stuff, but they don't say anything because they're doing what I was doing for a while. They're just keeping their head down and working so they can get paid, but they don't like it either. And I would just tell any of them, guys, 
it's time. Step out. Social media will help you make your own books. You know, yeah. don't live that way. You're selling yourself short and you're, you're selling your art short. You know, life is a gift from God and he gives you these talents to make great art and you're hiding it. You're hiding it under a bushel. You know what I mean? Like you're not really being a true self-expressionist. And that's a, that's a shame. You know, you're going to live once. You don't want to regret it when you're old. So I'm proud to be with guys like you, Eric and Dean, who we just step out and we just say, this is me. This is what I believe. And I could be right. I could be wrong, but I'm going to stand by it. Damn it. Yeah. You know, no, that's, that's what it's about, man. I mean, of course we, we need more of it. We've seen a lot of that because a lot of people are being kind of faced, forced to face the music. I mean, it is an, right. an absolute reality and to everybody's point. It's just, uh, like I was saying earlier, you can't possibly do your best work and that can't be fulfilling to be under those sort of conditions to where it's like, you know, something is going, going wrong, but you know, for the sake of maybe collecting that paycheck, it can't feel that good. Right. That can't, that can't feel no. good. I mean, no, you, but you, the position I was in, I have a mortgage in Southern California, San Diego, mm -hmm. which I think as of two weeks ago was announced the most expensive city in America. Highest cost of living is where I live. And I was like, I have a mortgage. They want me to make woke crap. What do I do? You know what I mean? And I had to step out like Indiana Jones in faith to God. Like, okay, I, I'll leave. This is terrible what they're asking me to do. And, right. uh, and, and wow, I couldn't be happier that I left. No, so. I was looking at that. Around. Obviously I'm glad because, you know, it was, it was around that time when you had walked away from that when you and I linked up. Right. And I right. got amazing colors for, for ISOM. So, you know, God has a way for sure bringing uh, individuals together that need. I them. wouldn't, I wouldn't know either of you or be friends with either of you because no. Dean saw me. I was like global viral news for three days when I did that. Like people were calling me from Europe. If I wanted to be interviewed, it was insane. It was very weird. I'm sure Dean knows this to be global news is very weird to be that for two, three days. And uh, I wouldn't be friends with uh, Dean either because that's how you notice me, right? Dean, you messaged me on Twitter or whatever. And, I, and I'm like, well, let me call you. So I called you and I'm like, what can I do for you, Mr. Kane? And you said, what can I do for you? I love your stance. I want to help promote you. I was like, wow, look at this guy. So, uh, you know, it's been a love affair ever since, you know. <laughs> Damn right. But that's the whole point. It's like if you see people making a stand and you agree with what they're saying and their values and why they're doing it, that's why I was so happy to reach out is that's the kind of people who I want to collaborate with. And what Eric has done, I want to collaborate with these people who care about the product and are, are legit and, you know, aren't just corporate tools running along with the identity politics and and those rules. And I, and I, and I, I love that. Again, we're the new rebels and I love it. Yep, that's what it's about, man. And uh, you know, seeing this uh, play out the way that it is has allowed me to link up with other people, awesome individuals. This has been just—I mean, I couldn't tell you just even a span of the last couple of years, man. And just the awesome people that I've been able to to meet up with and collaborate with has been been incredible. And you know, one thing that seems to be the common theme as we work with folks, definitely folks that we brought on here at the at the Ripperverse that were doing a lot of the mainstream stuff is, you know, just how fun it is. Um, and again, how fulfilling it is to be able to create and not just have to worry about that sort of stuff. And then you're doing things that you didn't even know that you were capable of because subconsciously, maybe that what you were suppressing all that because again, you were just under those um, uh, bizarre. Uh, uh, conditions or whatever it is that you want to want to call it. And um, it, it's, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It is unfortunately ruin, uh, ruining a lot of these sort of America, Americanized like industries. Like I look at American comic books, for example, right now. And um, you know, we set this, when I say we, I'm, I'm, I'm using it like in America, like that was, that was our genre, right? I mean, you even go to the old, uh, mangakas, they were all influenced, cartoonists, they were all influenced by American artists, right? That's not an opinion, that's a fact. Uh, now it's the, the complete opposite when you look at the Japanese uh, now, and now they kind of run things, right? And now people are going to, the, we just talked about this, like Godzilla and uh, manga and what's going on with that. Like now you're starting to see folks that are tired of the nonsense because they're looking for someone else to produce some sort of entertainment that they can just enjoy and kind of get lost in that's being produced on the other side uh, of the, of the planet. Now I do believe, and it's funny that, cause again, we are all athletes. This I'm, I'm a little different. I get it. Cause I look at like what's going on right now in the, in, I mean, various industries, but let's take it to the comic book industry. I look at that. Like what the, this to me would be where, <laughs> the American entrepreneur steps in and says, there's no fucking way we're going to allow this to happen. Like, and we're going to compete. It's not that we're going to stop beefing with Japanese people. No, it's more of 
we're going to compete. There's no way that they're going to be able to kick our ass and our own right. back. That's just not gonna. That's just not gonna happen. But that's, that's go ahead. A lot of ahead. people don't know that American comic books are an American invention. Invention. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, it came from our culture back in the 20s or the teens. I don't remember <laughs> exactly when. They say the Yellow Kid was the first comic book, but this is a, an American original art form. And you're right, Eric. How dare we let someone beat us on our own home turf? What is manga now? Like 80 percent of the market in, they, in america it's like 80 percent of the market or something they dominate it man it's insane like, and it's and great insane. more power to them i love that their books are great but we should be better like yeah. are you kidding me uh, i agree like but i mean that was i think that and and seeing the lack of response from the industry per se lets me know how kind of culturally we are in a different it's a different era because I just could not imagine years ago, like under the gym shooters of the world and that that spirit that exists uh, throughout the 80s. Right. Where people would be like, OK, yeah, we're just going to bend over and take it. Right. Yeah. They came over here. They're kicking our ass. But yeah, we're just no, no that, that wouldn't have never happened. We're like, OK, let's uh, our ideas maybe are not working. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's make sure that we produce. And then you're probably going to get. Uh, and what you should be getting is just sort of uh, another renaissance, if you will, of just creativity. And it's all built out of competition, man. Like, that's just what this that's what it was about. And now it's it's like these guys are either trying to do one or two things, ignore it and act like it's not happening or <laughs> worse, trying to take credit for it as if they had something to do with it, which we've seen a lot of. When uh, a lot of folks were under the, this delusion that, hey, American comic books are booming. They're, they're doing just, just great. Like, can't, never been better. And you start looking at the numbers and you're like, wait a minute, y'all are trying to take credit for manga sales. That's why you're saying that it's doing great. It's not because it's actually doing uh, uh, doing great. So that that spirit okay. is just not there. That nature to compete is, is, is I think, maybe, and maybe, I don't know, it, it, Dean, if you want to offer some perspective here, to me, that, that, that also speaks to a cultural problem. Maybe that speaks to a lot of the problems that we have in the in the Americas in general, not just with comic books, where the merit of it all kind of falls on the back burner, burner, excuse me, and nobody actually wants to get out there and compete, maybe because they're afraid or, or whatever the case may be. It's seen as almost it's a negative thing to want to go out there and be great and go compete. Um, you have to kind of walk on eggshells or you feel like you got to got to walk on eggshells to go out there and be great. Whereas in the back in the gap, it was just like, OK, we have this great idea. Let's execute. Let's get out there and figure this shit out. And um, um, and we'll see what happens. Some of the greatest ideas have been conceptualized um, off just a couple of guys or one guy, even for that matter, and a bomb ass idea. And now it's like, well, here the Japanese are and they're doing a lot of stuff that, you know, yeah, it may be a little more unique to to, to them, but. Definitely in the comic book space, that was all stuff that, and again, this isn't my opinion. This is stuff that they they proudly admit to all the old uh, Japanese cartoonists, like we were, uh, you know, looking at the Disney's of the world and who they were inspired by. Now it's like coming full circle and it's going the other way. We're now like a lot of the American stuff is trying to adopt their stuff, right? Um, right. and, and and do a version of that, which is ironically a version of what the American people were doing right. uh, uh, long right. ago. So it's kind of come come around a uh, uh, full circle. But I don't know what it is about that spirit. It just doesn't seem to be there among uh, any of really of these industries. And I think that's why a lot of them are failing. I know I've gone on a tangent. If either one of you guys want to kind of <laughs> add on that, no. Here's the thing, man. It's like I didn't get participation trophy when I was a kid. You know, I got a, if I won an award, I won an MVP award or best offensive player, best defensive player, or, you know, some you, you earn it. And, I, and when I didn't win that and I saw the guy who did, I said, you know what? I want that. I'm right. going to go compete for that. I'm yeah. going to earn that. And, and this whole participation trophy thing, that whole idea, there, remember that was a great Kia commercial. I think that kid comes up with his dad. He's like, all right, we we're the champions. And he gets the thing. And it said like participant. He was like, <laughs> no, he wrote like, <laughs> winner we won that's what it is yeah um, that's exactly I, I almost went out and bought a kia i was <laughs> like that's all right i believe this and but that's it when i when i saw guys that do great when i see someone do wonderfully i don't i don't wish them poorly i don't wish that you know i could take half of their winnings yeah i want to go win you did right that, that means right. i can do it absolutely let's go and i, I and i want to aspire to be like you you know we want we want all american lawmen dean can all american lawmen 
to be like your your comics and have that kind of success. That's what we want. We don't right. begrudge you for your success. No. You say, great, Eric did that. We want to do that. That's what I want to be a part of. And that's the right way to look at it. You know, the Japanese kicking our ass. I'm Japanese. So yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm, you're I'm torn. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, okay. Uh, you're uh, you're like a little Japanese, a little bit. And we're throwing some Tanaka. It's in the it's in the all, Dean Kane All American Law, man. My right. father is named Chris. My son is named Chris Christopher. And Tanaka is my given name, so that's what we did. And I appreciate Gabe doing that for me because it's personal to me. This is a personal project, and it means right. a lot. And I really love what it stands for and 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 what we're doing. But I think you know, I'm all about. I'm all about a quality of opportunity, not mm-hmm. a quality of outcome. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you start regulating the outcome, I, do I think there should be a safety net for people to some? Yes, to some degree, but to the, to the degree that you're giving people a hand up, not a hand out, because it never works. Right. People don't respond to that. When you allow people to use their God-given gifts and things that they can hone themselves and instill that, that, that hard work ethic and that respect for success, you end up with a very, very productive society, a very, very productive company, whatever it happens to be. And that's where, that's where it works. And I think that, that we have gotten into this weird place with this identity politics and the things that, that we keep pushing this DEI stuff and, you know, the ESG stuff for government, Terrible. you know, for big companies. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's people have lost their mind. So I think, again, I hope we look back at this time and go, Boy, that was really stupid. How could we've ever fallen <laughs> for that stuff? How could we've ever allowed that stuff to happen? Um, and then and we go, okay, you know, it'll never happen again. I hope. Um, but I think that's where it stems from. I think it stems from that, you know, participation trophy. Oh, you're all so great. You're not great. You better get your ass in there and go to work and get great. Absolutely. It's like Shaquille O'Neal says right. to his kids. He's like, look, he's like, Daddy, we're rich. And he's like, no, I'm rich. You're not rich. <laughs> yeah, he's- I'm rich. <laughs> Your ass better get to f- figure out right. something. Hey, you have a, an idea. You better right. pitch it to me. You got some. You got a leg up because you got me. But we ain't rich. <laughs> I'm rich. Earn it. Right. And that's the way it Love should that. be. When I when I saw that, I was Indeed. like, yes. That's their pro. Jack happens to be right. a huge Superman fan, so you know I know where he gets. Right. It. Yeah. True. True. And, right. and I, I do want to uh, talk about that because. You know, kind of both of you guys and in, in experience with Superman, obviously Gabe and, and what you had been coloring uh, before. But of course, Dean being being a lot of our Superman uh, kind of growing up, um, <laughs> there's been some in, intriguing um, things, to say the least, in, in terms of the direction that they've taken this character, especially in the comics. Um, the, the, it did. You know, we know the change of the I don't know. Did they like recently change it back? I'm not sure. Um, of the slogan or something I, of that I, nature. I think the the head of their movie thing, what's his name, James Gunn. I think he said for the movie they're going to use what I told them to never quit using: truth, justice, in the American way. I think they're going to okay. do that for the movie. I don't know that. I don't think they ever officially brought it back to the comics in any okay. way. Okay. Because I, because <laughs> uh, I think they're not that it's about me, but like I humiliated them so bad. I I do think there's probably a personal thing because. The people I humiliated, I didn't mean to. I spoke out that this is just evil. This is wrong. You know, to change. If you want a character that's a Kryptonian that is not the American way, just make a new one. Show us you actually have writing talent and make a new one. Don't destroy the one that people love and exist. It's, it's. I don't know. I, I, I would say the thing that was most objectionable to me about woke work that they wanted me to do is the identity politics. And here's why. What they want me to, you know, cut when I was coloring the books, what they want me to help them make is artwork that says, hey, Eric, you're a black guy, so you can't make it mm-hmm. because white guys will victimize you. Well, here you are, black, as far as I can see, making it. So why in the hell would I make stories that, hey, you're gay, you can't make it. Hey, you're yeah. a woman, you can't. Why would I make stories like that? Why are, I was inspired by the bravery of Han Solo and all them. Ford, Harrison Ford, I think that's a British name, and I think I'm not British. Yet I was inspired. I didn't need a half Mexican, Arab, Jew, Turkish, Native American guy like me. I didn't need to see that on the screen. It's fine. That is what you are, by the way, which is incredible. (laughs) What a mix that is. (laughs) I'm basically Mediterranean, like the entire Mediterranean plus Native American. (laughs) So I guess it'd be easier to say what I'm not. I'm not black or Asian. So there you go. That's, that's us. We got that. Us. Yeah, we got that covered over here. Right, you guys are black and Asian. So together, we're like we're like Voltron. The three yeah. of us, we just come together. We become the Ubermensch together. You know. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, but you know, uh, they lost ahead. that truth, justice, the American way. Um, we didn't say it. I don't think on my show. I think we said something else. 
I was also 26 years old when I was doing that. Happy to have a job, and I'd have said any of the words on paper. You know, that's just the way that is. Um, and and you do your job. And I wasn't, you know, I don't think, you know, that's what cracks me up now. You see college kids standing on principle and this. They don't know anything. They don't know anything yet. They haven't been there. They haven't had to pay bills. They haven't had to deal with stuff. There's a saying, I think the saying was something like, if you're not a liberal when you're young, you have no heart. And if you're not conservative yeah. when you're older, you got no, no brain. brain. Yep. <laughs> so I, I understand a lot of that. That's true. So, so it's one of those things. It's like, okay, um, you, you know, if you, well, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but, <laughs> but, and my kid is texting me like crazy because he's playing World of Warcraft right now, which cool. by the way is a great game. If you guys ever play him, I don't know if you do, but I won't get on it because I lost about seven months of my life. <laughs> yeah, game. man. Wow, wow, I'll do it to you, man. Wow, I'll we'll do, do it, it to you. <laughs> but I love that. I love what they did there. We went, my son's a video game what, designer. What did you uh, what did you play? We, we... What what class? Is that what you're asking yeah, me? Just out of curiosity. Well, I played a I played a dwarf human hunter. orc, a dwarf hunter, dwarf alliance hunter. only, dwarf hunter. And then I would speak like him, and I I, I called my character Scotsman. And I would talk like this all day. And people were like, would you please shut up? <laughs> yeah, I just would do it. And, I, and that's just, that's what I did for, you know, a large oh, part of my, uh, my my 40s. Shoot, I don't even know anymore. But my yeah. kid's back on playing it right now and was just texting me. Because um, I have him in our guild as a scum dweller. That's what he just texted me. Why am I a scum dweller? But I'm like, I'm doing a podcast with some very important <laughs> people. Just, just text him, uh, son. I'm rich. You're. We're not rich. I'm <laughs> tell you something. We're not rich. Okay? I am. <laughs> I am rich. <laughs> well, that was one of the greatest things about Shaq, though. You know, think about that. Shaq was raised by not his biological father, but by the sergeant. Mm -hmm. You know, an army sergeant. He. It, there's no play there. That's why you've got a guy who's so tough and so strong right. and who gets it and understands merit. And you know, and, and it's one of those guys. Like I, I, I'm not a celebrity. I renounce being a celebrity. I'm a regular guy. You know, I love all those kind of things. They say he happens to be a law enforcement officer too, so I love him for that. But I mean, that's the that's the attitude and that's the thought process for me that just makes a lot of sense. And that's what I feel like Chris Tanaka is in our in our in our our in, in Dean Kane All American Law Man. I think he's about that, and I understand that, and that makes sense to me. I look back at you know at movies, and you know, I look back at the. It's a Wonderful Life, Frank oh, Capra yeah. movies that make me super proud to be an American where it's about an ideal, not a race or an ethnicity or anything like that. It's about the idea of merit, of working hard, about supporting other people. Like I want people to do well. I root for people. Oh yeah, same. George Clooney was shooting ER and he was right next to me uh, and I was shooting Superman. He did a movie called, uh, um, it was the, it was the, vi it was the, uh, the vampire one. Um, uh, from dusk till dawn and it did oh, yeah. hugely well and I remember being so happy for him like I even whenever I was like congratulations way to go way to kick tail you know it's wonderful because it means that if, if he can do it then I can do it and then other actors right. can do it that's wonderful other actors I know people who are like Shh, forget George he's not that good he shouldn't have got that I'm like what are you what are you talking about mm. he got it he did it God bless him aspire to be like him Work hard to make that happen, and and I, I'm, I'm all about that. But it's that it's, that's that doesn't work with woke politics because you know you can't just be winners for working hard. There's got to be an oppressor and oppressed. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I don't buy that. You know, uh, Eric, they're going to start calling you the oppressor real soon. Oh yeah, um, no. Nah, you hire people. You yeah. Hire people, and you're making a content on your own. Nobody can tell you what you're an oppressor. Way to go. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, for sure. No, nah, if if they haven't done it all ready um it, it'll be here on on the way because folks and you know it's just how it is it's like <clears throat> again merit is, is again something that i find to be very valuable um it is um uh me being especially and you feel me on this because you did track as well um you know it's uh, definitely when you're doing anything but a relay right it's like it's you against the the other guys that that you're running against and that's it you know what i mean so you can't really uh even fall back on um a, a lot of anybody. Yeah, it's just like, hey, man, you were either good enough that day or you weren't. And that's about the bottom line. And I know that's something that certainly that's instilled to me uh, to this day I, or in me. I don't have I don't, I don't like I love the point that you bring up because that's not how I'm wired either. I don't look at other people's success as a threat to my own or feeling is that something that I did 
that I deserve per se, just because I, I exist or that I've worked hard or, or, or think that I've worked hard. Um, cause oftentimes you don't, you know, look, man, you don't know how hard folks are working. Um, and you know, they might be outpacing you, uh, by a, by a lot and quite a bit. Um, and that's why they often are in, in front of you, man. So this is that's why I'm the idea. Oh yeah. Kobe, Kobe talking about that. Yeah. I don't go to parties. I didn't do that stuff. I would get up and I'd work every day and I work every day. And, and, and after a year, I had, you know, 700 hours more shooting baskets. Yeah. And it shows, right? It, it shows on what it, it was right. that he was he was doing. And, of course, you're going to have people that want to put maybe a quarter of the work but be in that position, right? And it's just not how this shit works, man. I, I try to tell this to aspiring artists all the time. That is not how it works. Even people look at it, looking at me in the Riververse, and they look at it like, well, you know, he he kind of f- first project he makes millions of dollars. He's doing all these great things. And I'm like, I was grinding on YouTube for 18 years, man. Like that was a right. that was that was a long time or nearly 18 years. I've been grinding public for 18 years uh minimum. This is I didn't stumble across across any of this. I was leveraging my music audience, doing this and then doing that, turn that into that and turn that and I kind of did that over and over and over and that's how I got in the position it was that that I'm in. So, you know, when I often see people that are in front of me are in a position that I that I want to be in, I'm always looking at like, well, what did they do to get in that position? Right. And, and oftentimes, man, they putting in a lot of purposeful work, man, for a long extended period of time. But you got folks that want to be in that position like in a year or something of that nature. And it's just not how right. this shit works. It's just it's, it's just not how it works. You can't you got to be prepared to put as much, if not more. Uh, work than the person that's next to you that may get to where or have got to the place that you want to get to, man. And uh, look, it's just something that you don't really see. And fortunately, in a lot of folks, definitely my age and younger, um, you don't you don't see a lot of that. You start to see animosity. You start to see anger, jealousy, envy, these evil things that I've seen ruin uh, some people that I, I, I would hope to be great. Um, but because they let that get in the way, they'll ultimately never get in that position but again i think that's where a lot of this quote-unquote woke stuff a lot of that stuff stems from that same sort of, of of idea which is why the analogy that i use is that people are holding these ideological guns uh, uh to each other where it's like you're waiting to cancel that person and that person is waiting to cancel you and they'll throw you under the bus the minute they get the chance but it's only to advance their own individual uh, uh careers and i'm like that to me is just not the way to do it that's not the way to live and that's a miserable way uh, because eventually, yeah, it's going to come for you. And I think a lot of folks, and you can probably speak to this definitely in Hollywood, uh, that was participating in a lot of that cancellation stuff, thing comes full circle, and next thing you know, that mob is coming for them, right? Or if they maybe gave them a little bit of a right. crumb, right? And now all of a sudden, they they they, they coming for you uh, as well. And you were participating in trying to end some other guy's uh, career. And that's just... That, that, this is not the way to do it. It's not the way to do it. I just think that's um, that that um, you know you, problems are gonna gonna occur, and I think at, at minimum, hopefully, we start to cons- we start to see this sort of renaissance, or we're on the brink of. I always say that we're on the brink of it. I think that it can happen. I think you're gonna see there be a complete change and a shift, and not just Hollywood, but you're gonna see this in comics, and I think in other entertainment. And entertainment assets because the means have been more affordable. You can probably speak to this. Um, you know, people can make just the. I mean, I've seen some films made on like like YouTube films that are made on fucking iPhones, and I'm like, what the, what the hell? Like th- th- this is how far we've come. But that speaks to how things have been more decentralized. So now at this point, it's about the individuals taking advantage of these tools. And and going to be great with it. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of that. And hopefully we do see a lot more of that. And um, yeah, it's not going to uh, people are going to be mad at it. Right. Because they can't control it. Right? And I think that's why I think it was less about just the fact that we we were successful. But with the Riververse and more about they couldn't control it, which had a way of making them even more angry that it was like. <laughs> Uh, you you know you who do who you go to right? I'd have people complaining, for example, about our employees, our contractors, and they're complaining to me and like, okay, so you know you can't cancel Brandon because he said something you didn't like about I don't know trans cr- crap or something like some weird whatever it may be. So I'm not gonna do anything to him because he's a man that is free to have his damn opinion. Now what? 
you know, like who do you go to after that? Like you can't go to the, or there's no boss. There's no no other boss here. There's no you can't. And that's the reason why we house a lot of this stuff on our website, right? Same thing that Gabe's doing, which I respect so much because there's a risk to take. But that's why we house everything the way that we do because it's like, who do you go to then? You don't like me? Great. Awesome. I mean, it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. But you can't, like, come for the handler because there's no other handler. It's just us. And I think to me that that will bring about a world that will be a lot more creative um, and a lot more rewarding for those creatives to get out there and uh, 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 do great things. So there's a lot of opportunity. If you guys are watching this, you're in the chat, man. I'm telling you, take advantage of this. You got even Dean Kane telling you, take advantage of a lot of these tools that are out there um, to you and, and get out there and sort of be great. So I do want to get, because I'm sure there's some questions uh, for both both of you guys uh, in the Super Chats, and we'll we'll be sure to get through those, start flying through um, some of those uh, I want to ask Dean, is there anything else that you got coming on the horizon as far as like uh, stuff that is that you're working on? And you're you're always dabbing in some um, other projects. Again, we have, of course, uh, all American lawman and stuff. But is there anything else that you got you got your hands in that you want people to kind of be on the lookout for? I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm going to yep. just choose them and go real quick here. That's fine. Uh, currently hosting season 10 of Masters of Illusion on the CW, which is great fun. I just I just co-hosted and 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 was one of the co-hosts for the Hollywood Christmas Parade, which is coming out real soon. Um, uh, let's see here. I got a a movie out. I got two movies out right now. Um, just just came out streaming. One's called Condition of Return with Annalyn McCord. Uh, she's fantastic in it, and she's really easy on the eyes. Even though they tried to make her look bad in this, she kind of can't do that. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, Bringing Back Christmas, which is a sweet Christmas uh, family movie that's out streaming right now. Uh, there's a show called The Curse on Showtime that's out right now with, with Academy Award winning Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder, who is kind of strangely genius. Um, I, uh, I'm working with a company called True Play Games, and True Play Games is sort of a, it's a Christian-based video game company. Okay. So as a police officer, one of the things I work with is, is, is kids. Um, and keeping them safe from online predators and um, people who want to do, you know, sexual trafficking and things like that and human trafficking. And um, unfortunately, like you play, you know, Call of Duty or you play World of Warcraft, there are people who are in there trying to talk to your kids. And they are trying Making to talk to Making weird Scottish voices and stuff, right? What's that? Making weird Scottish voices, you know? Yeah, like me, exactly. Listen to me, no, no. Um, so, but it's all that kind of stuff that can happen. But if, you, if you're worried about that for your kids, True Play Games is a self-contained um universe if you will and it, it's all you know uh wh whether you're christian or not it's very biblically based in morals and values and um it's a wonderful platform i'm happy to be a part of that i'm working with genesis gold group which uh we uh you know people are like okay dean you've done all this for so many years you've been working and blah blah you know how did you i thought everybody who was on a series you know blew all their money on hookers and cocaine well outside of the fact that i don't do cocaine or have hookers. Um, I'm smart with my money. I'm a Princeton kid. I've made a lot of money in real estate. Um, and I moved out of Los Angeles. Gabe, you're going to be, you got to be my neighbor soon. Buddy, <laughs> not, well, you, know. you think he's kidding, Eric, but I'm planning on moving to Vegas. I, I'm pretty sure because hey, California get is out the, of most there, beautiful, man. the most beautiful state in the nation. But uh, there's a little problem with the politics here. You may have heard. Just, just, so, just well, first of all, it. I have been, I have gotten really good. Like I'm back to my old high school athletic days from jumping over turds on the sidewalk. It's given me that explosiveness I had in high school. You know, when I played defensive line at Rancho Bernardo High School, I can explode again whenever I need to. There you go. So, yeah, I'll tell you what, it doesn't hurt dropping that 13.2 percent off the top. No oh. state income tax. Forget about your sales tax. Forget about oh. your gas taxes, energy taxes. I mean, it's just a whole different ball of wax. It's five bucks a gallon out here. What are you talking about, man? How much is it now? Five bucks a gallon. Oh, five bucks? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, that's you good. Know? It's reasonable. It used to be two fifty, but whatever. It's it's a whole different world. So those are a bunch of the things that I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm taking off to go shoot a couple other movies next week before Christmas gets here. Uh, and uh, I've still got a movie that I wrote, produced, directed, and starred in called Little Angels, that uh, I want to get out there. We just haven't found the right distribution for it yet. Okay. Uh, it bums me out because it's like the Mighty Ducks. And it's I because I did everything on it, I'm really proud of the project. And I'm proud of my actors and my little – it's about uh, – it's basically about 13-year-old and under um, girls soccer. But it's a, a, a college football coach ends up having to coach them. Um, and it's 
it's it's a it's a very sweet trip and it's a lot of fun and and I'm very proud of that. So I want to get that out there. Uh, and then I'm just then bringing on 2024 because here we go. I'm gonna get my hands in a lot of cookie jars and make a lot of projects and. We're going to put out uh, Dean Kane All American Lawman. Hell yeah. Done with that thing, and hopefully that'll be a gigantic success. And uh, just keep rocking. Yeah, yeah. And I and I got to ask while I'm thinking about it because you were rattling some of that stuff off. As you know, you know, uh, working over here at the Riververse, we do have Jen and Sylvia Saska. Oh my with god! A lot, a lot of people don't know Dean Kane has worked with them uh, on a film. It was a Vendetta with Big Show, right? Yes. Uh, that you work with. It. Please, please let everybody know about your experience there because uh, I see them actually, Jen and Sylvia, they're in the chat. <laughs> let me tell you. Listen, you know when you work with somebody who you respect and you have a great experience with them, you go if they call, if Jen and Sylvia call me, I say yes. That's just going to be the answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, we got this movie. We want to know if, yes. I don't even know who I'm playing. I don't care. What? A, what? A, they're so good. And uh, I know we can use a little bit of colorful language here, so I'll do it a little bit. Yeah. Which was, like, they're so excited on set when something's going right, and they're so involved in it, and they, they're such great filmmakers, storytellers, um, that, you know, it, it, we'd be going, we'd be going, we'd be going. You know, everything's happening. The scene's happening. And then instead of saying, and cut, every once in a while, they get like, and Fuck yeah. Fuck <laughs> yes. yeah. And I'm like, I think that's a cut. I think that's, that's a cut. That's a cut. Okay. You know, so it was just great fun. And Big Show was phenomenal. Yeah. Super talented guy. Massive, yeah. massive individual. Um, and you forget, like, he can be in the room with you and you're thinking, oh, yeah, you start talking, you just forget about the size. And then he goes out to go to the bathroom or something, comes back in. You're like, dang. Big wow. Dude. How <laughs> did you just do that? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, but it, but great guy, great movie. If it's a great movie, if you want to go back and check it out, it's a pretty dark movie for me. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed doing that. And like, like I said, I'd work with Jen and Sylvia, Saska right now in a second. I'm not forcing them to say they're going to hire me, but I would do it if they did ask. I love that. Oh, I think we I may we, have a connection. Yeah, yeah, we got a we got we got a connection, right? So here here we go. go. So here we go. Maybe that's something that we make happen. Again, I appreciate they do like the gore. They do like a little bit of gore. That's what they do. That's what they do. I've heard. I've like heard that. Gore. Just a tiny bit. Not, not too much. Yeah. Uh, not too but, much. But uh, but no, I appreciate everybody. It's over. It's been almost 1,600. Actually, it's been over 1,600. Over 1600. You guys have been hanging out with us. Wow. Uh, excuse me today, man. It's been a crazy strip. Again, bigmancomics.com. It's pinned on the in the chat right now. So you can go check it out. Uh, Dean Kane, All-American Lawman. Buy both, of course, Dean and Gabe. Go check that out. You can uh, go back that. That you said end of winter uh, is where you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's. Uh, I was looking at my calendar. We're scheduled. Yeah, we we pro uh, we advertised that way at 80 pages by the end of winter, and we're up to 114 pages. But it the deadline hasn't stretched out. Um, but I, I have a bunch of artwork. Oh, you got it there. Okay, there you go. Is there if you scroll down a little? Because we got comics, we got four different covers. We got 500 limited foil covers. But oh, stop! Oh, go up a little bit. This is new. We just added this today. Uh, a little more, a little more. The Down top shirt, the blue T-shirt on the right there. This right here. There oh, you there go. Is. In the comic, Dean gets this Dia de los Muertos shirt. It's a really fun scene. How he gets it. Look at the smolder there in his eyes. Look at that. <laughs> you know, I I photoshopped that morning to this this image this morning to put this logo on it. I asked Dean the other day. I said, Hey man, can you send me a picture of you in like a blue T-shirt? Because I want to make this for the uh, the website so people can wear the same shirt that you're wearing in the adventure of the comic. And he told me that when people ask him for pictures, they usually just ask him for nudes. So I just wanted everyone to I'm know kidding. that I think I think Dean was offering me nudes. And I told him I'm a married I'm a married man, and it's not like that, but I still love you. So yeah. there you go. I told you I make a lot of money, Gabe. How do you think I make it? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Dean, I told Minnie that uh, you said that, and she made up this fake thing where I, I asked you for a picture of you in a shirt, and she said, you said, uh, you want me to keep my clothes on in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> well, your daughter is very, very funny. Yes. She has a great sense of humor. You, oh, she won the Rose Battle two weeks ago. I Did I tell you? My daughter's a stand-up comedian, my daughter, Minnie El Taib, and she won the Rose Battle again for the third time in a row. So she's a killer, man. That's she's impressive. Awesome. There you go. Look at that. Look at that art right there. <laughs> yeah, man. That's sick, man. I have a bunch oh, of art on my screen. If uh, would it be a problem to share it? I have some. Uh, here. No, no. If you want to uh, share, it, it up. move that right so there. This is this is some fun stuff here. I mean, Akeon, he's just such a master illustrator, and uh, yeah, Dean. Uh, a lot of people don't know he wanted to be a dentist when he was at Princeton, so he's practicing a little bit of tooth removal in this image here. So uh, you know, it's an extraction. You know, it's an express. Quick extraction. extractions. 
Yes. Yeah. It's not very five precise, minutes, but it's quick. Five minutes or it's free, the extraction. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we have a nod to James Bond. There's a beautiful Veronica there in the background as a singer in the nightclub. But we try and hit all those notes that people love in that stuff that, that it wasn't woke. It was just fun. You know, we're just a, a truly self-expression here as artists of, hey, oh, and there's a cover by me, the cover that I illustrated and colored. That's right. When you're the boss at Big Man Comics, you can give yourself an assignment like this. There you just go. Like Jim, just like Jim Lee drawing a bunch of covers over at DC Comics. So I gave myself a job drawing a cover there. But uh, we are having an absolute blast. It starts off with this amazing chase at the bad guy's base. We've got bazookas. We've got A-10 Thunderbolt aircraft. Dean riding a motorcycle like a madman. Uh, it's, I mean, I haven't had more fun. Akeon hasn't had more fun making a comic book. I don't think ever. It, it's so That's much awesome. fun. We're allowed to do what we want here. And just uh, little, a little nod to Point Break, Dean. You diving out of a plane. Do you want to tell people about Point Break and your history there? You know? Well, I did audition for it and was beaten by that one guy, Keanu Reeves. He, <laughs> yeah. took it, he got to play Johnny. It was called Johnny Utah at yeah. first. And me being a former professional football player, having just finished and, and starting acting, I was brand new and totally green. Um, and um, that Mr. Keanu Reeves guy took the took the job from me. And this had a pretty decent career since. He's done what did he, do? Did, he do right, anything? Well, yeah. did he do anything after Point Break? Or no, he's done like a couple more since then. Oh, okay, were, like a like decent. a Burger King commercial or something, or <laughs> like a commercial. He might have done a commercial, maybe a movie of the week, okay. um, and uh, the Matrix right. and some others, whatever. And some John Wick, whatever. I mean, some things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bless him. But good for him. There's an example. Bless you, Keanu. Great job. Great work. But you see how hard. Let's just take John Wick for example. Do you see how hard he works? His gunplay mm -hmm. and that stuff for real. He's on the, he's out there with Terran tactical and he's working it all with real weapons so that when he does something, it's absolutely right and real. And he knows how to do it. That's the work, man. That's what it is. And bless him for that. That's why it looks so great. There you go. He seems great. awesome, man. So I yeah, guys, um, everyone in the chat, th guys, thank you so much for being here and thank you for the support. Make this a success for Dean and I blow this thing up, man. We, we know what you guys have done with Eric and all that. And uh, we're putting our hearts out there and we're putting our, you know, Dean and I were speaking out about what we believe about what entertainment should be and could be to lift people up and entertain the hell out of them. So support us today. We can't do it without you. And, and I can't even tell you how much I support, uh, like appreciate you guys. I, I can't tell you. I, I took that chance to leave DC comics cause I didn't want to make ugly stuff anymore. And uh, you guys have rewarded me. So please keep doing that. We love you so much for doing that. hundred percent truth. Absolutely love it. So again, guys, we have it pinned at the top right now. You can go check that out. You can also go to bigmancomics.com to go uh, back this project. Um, again, they're looking to start getting stuff out uh, towards the uh, end of the winter. So go right. check out Dean Kane, American uh, Lawman. Uh, go check that out, man. It's, it looks it looks killer. I've seen this art. You've sent me a bunch of it, and um, I, as soon as I saw it. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm all in on this. So be sure to get this, guys, if you have not um, already, man. And again, I appreciate both of you guys kind of joining us and hanging out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to some of these super chats. I know some of these have questions uh, for us all. So I'm going to fly through these. And I know we've got a bunch um, named because I've been out for a fucking week. So um, Silver Ogre, I appreciate you being a member. Brent Wolf with 50 says, hell, Rip Dean. Uh, Gabe and chat. When are you going to announce Ripper first printing and distribution? Is that my next venture that I didn't know about? Uh, <laughs> I, I bet there will be creatives chomping at the bit to get in on that action. Um, look, I have been, I, I get it. The infrastructure that we have available to us um, that we've built is something that you know, let's just say we've had some conversations and we pondered on it and we may be looking into some stuff. Um, in the future, so let's say be on the lookout. Let's just say, let's just say that, um, Brent. I appreciate you. I also appreciate your 10 gifted uh memberships as well to the channel. Scott McKenzie becoming a member for six months. Thank you so much, CJ. With a toy, he says, Hell Ripper, glad you're doing better. Congratulations on an amazing Alpha Core campaign. Much respect to all three of you for bringing excitement, excitement, excuse me, to comics. I backed all American lawmen. Hell yeah, uh, looking forward to it. Hell yeah, man. Glad we. Got some eyes on that. More eyes on that. Again, guys, go support this project if you have not already. Grateful Dog, appreciate that. 
Daniel with a five. Enjoyed ISO one and two. Loved Alpha Core. Also, Dean Kane and his mind's blown. So shout out. And yeah, we know it. I've seen some of the reviews coming in. You guys are loving Alpha Core number one. And I appreciate you guys. It's all going to the same pot. So it doesn't matter to us if you like one over the other. And when Yara comes out, maybe you like that over both or vice versa. Who cares? Um, you know, that's the point about what we're trying to do here at the Riververse. We'll have something for you um, for sure. Uh, Vito Prashad, I appreciate that. 10 uh, gifted memberships as well. Scorpio with a 10 says, Welcome back. Feels good to be back. Uh, Super Cosmic Mutant Honey, what a name. Uh, Candle Squid with a five says, Hey, Dean, you were my first Superman, and it's amazing to see you on the show. I love that. It's beautiful. Except the hard part for me is like, you know, that's uh, probably uh, the name is what a great name, but probably, you know, 40 years old. You know, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Is like I grew up. You're like, how could you be 40 and grow up watching me? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, it, it, it gets you. That, hey man, 30. same with me, man. It's like, uh, hey, he was our Dean was our, our Superman growing up. So you know, kind of that, that's what I take happened. it. I'll take it. Yeah, there you go. It's a beautiful thing, but it's just humbling. <laughs> like I grew up watching. I'm like, how how could you? How you're could grown man. How could you have grown up watching me? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot. Born in 1966. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Vito Bashad with a five says, can you canonize Dean Kane in the Ripperverse? I'll, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll talk with Dean about maybe figuring out who he can do something like that. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Head Case Laboratory says, let's go, Superman. Let's go. Uh, it says, also, Gabe, where can I buy Truth, Justice, uh, and the and American Way, excuse me, uh, Hell, the Ripperverse, and uh, Alphacor? Uh, Head Case Laboratory, thank you so much. The $5 is very generous for Eric, and thank you for asking me. Truth, Justice, American Way, there was only one printing. I literally have like 50 of them left. Email me, Gabe El Taib, that's my name. Uh, Gabe El Taib Illustration, that's the email I'm using for that. Gabe El Taib Illustration at gmail.com. I'll put that in the chat for you guys to see, okay? Uh, but yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Justice, American Way. There's just a handful of those left. I'm not reprinting them, so that's the end of that. Um, there you go. Interesting it's scenario with that book. <laughs> yeah, I've downed about 50 of them, and there was uh there will not be a volume two, there will not be reprints. So there you go. So that, Gabe El Taib illustration, right? Gabe El Taib illustration at Gmail. That is the email at I've Gmail. used for just the truth justice stuff. I put it in the chat though. I hope I didn't do a typo. Dean knows how well I do typos when I text him constantly. So pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Strange messages, and I'm like, what? He's like, I oh, that meant I meant to say push. Right, okay, oh, what you said oh. was borderline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Brandon Clark, what it is, says Gabe is a real one, can't wait for this book. Hell, oh, yeah. thanks, dude. Yeah, Brandon always comes on my channel, uh, guys. Uh, follow my YouTube channel, please. It's just Gabe El Tabe on YouTube, please follow me there. But Brandon, I had the privilege of making a drawing for his brother of wow. Isom. His brother was hey. in like a, I don't know if it was a coma or something terrible. And when his brother recovered and came out of it, they read Isom together. I could be getting some of the details wrong. But uh, much love to you and your bro, Brandon. I hope we make a lot more stuff for you. And I hope God fully heals your brother. I know he had a tough time. I don't know the details, but I remember you reached out to me about that stuff. And who boy. So, it, like, again, this is what's so thrilling to me and humbling about making art with amazing guys like Dean and Eric is, like, we want to make good stuff to uplift people. And when mm -hmm. I can, like, do that for – like, to me, to draw a head sketch of Isom and throw it in the mail, it's nothing to me. Like, it's easy. It's 10 minutes to sketch it and throw it in the mail. But, like, to a fan, I know what it means to them, you know? So I'm happy to do stuff like that. It's really – and, like, you want to talk about charity. We'll be here for three more hours when we talk about the stuff Dean does, like the Toys for Tots oh, yeah. and all that and the well, yeah. troops and – oh, my goodness. So, like, Dean's a huge inspiration to me on that front of being charitable to people and giving back. I think that's very important. So There you Bless go. You for that. Truth. Yeah. Septic K Mick with a uh, becoming a member. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Miss Maria with a two says love Dean Kane as Superman. Thank you, Miss Maria. Shout out, shout out. Uh Taylor Swift greater than Disney Star Wars and MCU with a dollar. I appreciate that. No message. Uh Stitch Three Months says great to see Dean on here today. Thanks, Dean. Happy, oh, happy, happy Stitch. Okay. Uh our Brownish with a five says glad I got the Riververse comic books. More books. Uh, to add, yes, when you get Dean Kane, All American Lawman, you will have another book. And of course, maybe if you got our short boxes, which I'm looking at, you can throw that book in there 
uh, as well for storage, which um, I know a lot of people have been asking if we're going to do another one of those. And perhaps uh, Car Carlos with a two says love. I some one uh, saving money right now to buy number two and alpha core. It will be around, man. And we're not going anywhere. Um, you can't get in through the pre-order window, but uh, it's not going anywhere. So uh, you can get that over at Ripperverse.com whenever. And, of course, that includes ISOM2, uh, to your point. So appreciate that. We got B. Christopher with no message in $100. Ooh, I appreciate that, man. That ain't cheap. Uh, B. B. Christopher, uh, no message there for me to even read. Just drops 100 and leaves. I respect that, man. Thank oh, you so much. I respect it, too, as long as it's not my son, Christopher, because he'd be giving you my money. <laughs> Which I'd be happy for anyway, but still, it's <laughs> your rich. Chris ain't rich. You're yeah, rich. exactly. Oh, so yeah, I, I gotta try to explain to him. I'm rich. <laughs> you're not, buddy. But give Eric our money, my money. <laughs> I love it. Hey, if I'm gonna give it to anybody, Eric, you can have it. I, hey, I appreciate it. Nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless, I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Peckerwood with seven picture. months says, "Tell Dean I ordered my signed full copy." Whoa. But Hell yeah. I love those. Are limited. That those are gorgeous. Love that picture too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a sample of the foil copy. I'll be back. I have it behind me. Oh, I'll do that. Thing. Please, please. Um he's, he, he's walked into the background. Uh, yeah, just magic. <laughs> he ain't gotta explain it. Uh Albert Nada Retro with a two Canadian says, How about President Dean Kane? In the Ripperverse, so you're thinking maybe Ooh, Dean, well, nice. the president, as long, you, as long as she's doing the right thing and truth, justice in the American way, he's not. <laughs> you don't want to I, part I of be that kind of a president. Get me in, <laughs> let me do my things, try to tr try to make things better for everybody in America, and get me out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, uh, there's a great comment. It's not a super chat. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's yeah, yeah. richly, richly blessed, blessed in Christ. Keanu and Dean <laughs> would be epic for John Wick Five. I'm down. <laughs> you finally get your revenge for him stealing Point Break. You finally he, get him. You finally get him. You can't. You can't. You can't beat the way Keanu delivers lines, man. You cannot do it. No. I'm good. an FBI agent. That's right. <laughs> good. Oh, there's the foil. Yeah, I got to turn good. off my virtual background to make it show. Um, so yeah, so uh, I had this sample printed out by the people in Arizona. I forgot their name, but they do all the Billy Tucci's like metal covers, foil covers, glow in the dark. And this thing is beautiful. The video on the internet does not do it justice, but we're limiting this to 500. So uh, check those out. We can get them signed or unsigned or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm thrilled about this. That takes you back to the fun of 90s comics when they would do glow in the dark and foil and all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, just getting back to that spirit where it wasn't Everything wasn't hedged by the cancel pigs, you know, with the, as you say, Eric, because everyone's just pointing those uh, figurative cancel guns at each other. Yeah. We're just being true artists here and having a blast. So, yeah, this is a really fun cover here, the way this one works. A pure foil on the whole thing, not just the logo. The entire thing is reflective. And the way, uh, I mean, just look at that cop car, the angle on it chasing that Ford truck. That is so like 80s action movie. That's insane there. So I love it. So I just wanted to show you that one. Good stuff. That's a sample I had. There you go. Appreciate that. Appreciate right. that. Um, Henry Heck, appreciate you becoming a member. We got uh, our Brown Ridge again with a five. So the most important thing in uh, thing in comics is ISOM's uh, social security number. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, apparently. No, it's just, I, I get it. Uh, our Brown Ridge just explained it to Dean is uh, re referencing this meme of people that it's more of our detractors. None of our actual fans cared, but apparently, I guess they thought I saw one was supposed to be this information dump where everybody knew everything about him in 90 oh, pages and, and all that stuff. And they, uh, something was wrong, of course, because uh, they didn't have his uh, social security <laughs> number. I uh, know every single damn thing about the character. Well, um, I got a great one for you about the detractors. You know, when people shit on you, Dean, and you, Eric, and me, um, I heard the great, none less than Dion Sanders himself, Coach Prime. He said, they don't boo nobodies. True. Right? Good point. So when you're getting haterade, that means you've done something, you know? And the, the people with that culture of resentment, they hate it. They, they're like, why does Dean have that success? It should be mine. So no. well, then get in the weight room, fat ass. You can have it too. <laughs> Go do something, man. <laughs> I got you. Uh, uh, nah, that's, that's 100%, man. It's just, 
I don't know. People people are weird, man. Um, if, if, I've, if I've learned nothing else uh, with starting this co uh, company, it's just fuck, man. There's some pe weird people out there. Uh, Stephen Tap with a two said, "Yo, what up, Superman? What's up, Stephen Tap? What a great last name, Tap." Yeah. Uh, Albert with a five says, uh, "Could you pass on Brian Martinez info to Dean? I bet they could have a great talk about father's rights on Badger Live." Uh, strings. Oh, I can look into it. He's referring to this is a guy channel that I actually went on and talking. We're talking about um, um, men and, and and all sorts of stuff. So perhaps, yeah, yeah. Uh, Juggernauts with a twenty gifted subs. That's a bunch of those. I appreciate that. A drinker crazy. I was on his channel the other day. Uh, says uh, who wins a fight, American Way or Brian? Uh, Gabe, I saw him comment on it. He said he's like I the did. only person that has basically worked on both characters, right? So, right, since I worked on Brian Solari, a Ripper yeah. character, and then I worked on uh, True Just American Way. I, I wrote and drew that <laughs> book and colored a lot of it. I would say this. American Way is made of supercharged American steel, his hands and him, and Brian Solari's face is made of meat. So my guy wins. My guy wins. <laughs> Your guy loses. Steel my guy wins. Meat. It doesn't he says, <laughs> Appreciate he him, it. I'm gonna beat your meat. Like, I don't think that's, that's, that's dialogue. That, we that'd need be a work. weird comment. That's, yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Marvel and DC would love it if we did that in the book. Oh, well, of course, <laughs> they, yeah, they'll make it play out on 12 panels right. as well. They, they'd love right. that. They, they have a blast. <laughs> uh, best name I can think of with a, with a 10 says, uh, my family recorded every episode of Lawrence Clark on VHS. I mastered the art of cutting uh, out commercials. It was one of my few shows my whole fan watched together. Much love to all of you. Appreciate wow. it. I love that. Best comment I could ever hear. Family there watching together. It's just such a cool thing because I know how important it is for my son and I over projects that we bond with, whether it's a comic book or a movie or, so, or a series. So to be part of somebody's um, memories growing up like that, it's phenomenal. I love that. Plus, it's really tough to master the art of cutting out commercials on VHS. Let me tell you, <laughs> that was timing is deal. involved. That, that is a skill, nonetheless. Uh, okay, we got Steven again with a five. Says, have you ever read the Romantic Manifesto by Ayn Rand? I uh, highly recommend. It's a great collection of essays regarding how great art empowers us. Yes, read a lot of Ayn Rand, um, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm not necessarily, I'm, I'm a, you know, I come from the more Mary Rothbard school of uh, more libertarianism, but not quite an objectivist, but Obviously, as a creative, I mean, you can't really go wrong with Iron Rand. So, <clears throat> most definitely, uh, Bruce. I just with bought it. I just bought it, buddy. On your there recommendation. You well, I never read The Fountainhead or Atlas Shrugged until last yeah. year. Okay. And I couldn't believe what I I, I do audiobook because I was drawing Truth Justice. I could not believe what I was hearing in I in uh, Atlas Shrugged. I'm like, this sounds like it was written a week ago by SJWs. Like, oh, my God, she nails the communists in that thing. Insane. Yeah. Uh, amazing writer. She's an, I don't agree with everything. She's an atheist. I'm not. But holy cow, she's good. Holy cow. Good. Uh, Bruce, my man's Bruce with a 10. So Alpha Core was a beast. Amazing story with some of the best art yet. I bet Gabe and Dean's book oh, as soon okay. as Gabe posted the campaign. Hell, yeah. I love to see that. Thank you, Bruce. Absolutely love to see flash that. Is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Two men wins that race. Yeah, <laughs> Travis uh, with a five. Mr. Kane, will you be starring in any Hallmark movies? Uh, Travis, the, the no. Uh, Hallmark changed their leadership and things about five years ago. So I haven't done any uh, Hallmark movies in about five years, even though I've done about 13 of them. Uh, Bill Abbott, who used to run Hallmark, now is over at GAC, Great American Channel. Um, and the, the better chance that I'd be over there probably than Hallmark. I just They just haven't called me. Um, and that's the way that works. There you go. Uh, we have uh, GM Rufus with a 26. Dean Kane for president. My man Rufus. Yes. We're rallying. I love it. I love it. Uh, Phyllis Fye with a with a 10 says, just wanted to say I love Lois and Clark. Appreciate that, Phyllis. That was such a – what a lucky job for a first – like a first real job for an actor. Man. So, so right? Blessed. Holy cow. I, I couldn't even imagine like even – like that, that had to – I mean, you were young, very young then, uh, and like so. I guess take us through that. Like, what what was the thought process with that? Like, okay, twenty five, twenty six years old. I'm about to be Superman, right? Is uh, this is a character that transcends? Like at that by that point, it was already of like a fabric of of American culture, right? 
Like, is there pressure? Is there like how how, did, how does one feel going into into something like that? It's too big to like put into words. It's mm -hmm. like when you tell a kid, like a little baby kid, hey, listen, put your hand in the fire, it's gonna burn. We don't even know what burn feels like until you put your hand in that fire. They're like, okay, that's that's burn. I get that. I couldn't understand what it would be like to be my buddy who helped me read for all the stuff, just practice lines and stuff with. Um, he had to play my lowest lane all the time, and he just did not like doing that. Ooh. But he was, but he helped me out. Oh. My buddy Winter. So uh, <laughs> um, I remember we, right when I got finally got the job, I was just elated, and the way they they wrote it made more sense to me. I wasn't trying to replace Christopher Reeve because he's my Superman. I didn't, I couldn't replace him. In fact, when I played Superman, for me, Clark Kent was the character, and then Superman was the disguise. So I mm -hmm. kind of just played Christopher Reeve version of Superman in my mind. That's what I was doing uh, with with him. Cause that was a disguise, but the idea we were sitting there, we went skiing right out. We had a ski trip plan, my buddy and I, right after I got the job and we we're off going up a ski lift and it's all quiet. And the snow's coming down. We're just sitting there thinking I was just trying to put my mind together. And he's like, dude, for the rest of your life, people are going to refer to you as Superman. What does that feel like? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't, I don't know. And then by year four, Man, I'd be in the Superman suit walking around. I could go to, I could have gone over to the 7 Eleven and just picked up the, yeah, I wouldn't even have thought twice about it. I got so yeah. comfortable in it. It was so weird. Um, yeah. But it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's just too big to explain. And uh, I am forever grateful. I love being a part of that world. Uh, I have great respect for the character and for the, the way we, we got to play him. And um, it's just a, it's a joy of a lifetime. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely love that. That's what's up. Uh, Vito Prashad. With a five says maybe Chris Tanaka makes a cameo in a future Alpha Core book or anything uh, Riververse. Uh, he says so. Okay, I know the guys who can help make that happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like they're yeah. here or anything. Well, the I mean. first people that'll help make it happen are the chat for supporting the book. You make this a success because we already have ideas for further uh, Dean uh, Kane All American Lawman Adventures. We want this to be a franchise for sure. Support so, that would we, be wonderful. We'd really yeah. love that. There yeah. you go. There you go. Again, guys, we have it pinned. Pin comment section or pin in the comment section right there if you need the actual link or just go to bigmancomics.com. Okay, Dr. Fate with a 10 says, Dean, your example of being both Clark Kent and Superman with the discipline of their roles gave me hope that the impossible can be uh, can be strived uh, uh, to being made possible and has given me hope even as I grow. He says, thank you. Beautiful. That's that. That is what the character is about. He's a friend. He's about hope. That is 100% it. So that's wonderful. It was more fun to play Clark Kent than Superman, though. I always wanted Superman just to be action. I was like, don't please don't have me like give a speech as Superman. It just felt weird all the time. Like, let me come in, do something heroic, and then zip out, and then I'm have Clark show up and talk about what was so cool. Or let Lois yeah. give the speech about what I was so cool. I just I felt like Superman was a man of action. Should come in, do the action, get out of Dodge. There you go. A uh, literature devil with the five. Oh, my man's li literature devil says man manga, excuse me, is uh, winning in the West because the good ones tend to value traditional storytelling over any message. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they chase what readers want to read. That is true. That is uh that is very, yeah. very true. So yeah. Um Vito Prashad with the five says, uh, what was I'm guessing it, it what, what was it like working with uh with Terry Hatcher? Oh uh, no, excuse me, what was working with Terry Hatcher like? And what was she like behind the scenes? Terry Hatcher. Are you asking me or are you asking 14-year-old me's imagination? So. Terry Hatcher was, <laughs> in my opinion, and still is the greatest Lois Lane of all time. Wonderful. I had to kiss her an awful lot. And you know how, you know, like if you see something, you think, oh, man, that person must be a great kisser or not. I just want you to know she was a phenomenal kisser. <laughs> so anything Was it, might was be it all there, real and spectacular? Uh, real and spectacular. Also, that's uh, oh. that's the Seinfeld. Uh, that's the Seinfeld yes. quote, but also very true in real life. Oh, okay. so I so I so I've been told. There you go. <laughs> I'm not jealous. Yeah. I, I you know just I'm not jealous. I'm just <laughs> want that to be out there. It was my job. I had to do it. Twenty six. I'm not married. I had to kiss Terry Hatcher all day every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm just stretching. <laughs> uh, the orc with a five says, "Would Dean come on FNT soon? Uh, he's the second, oh. maybe third. 
uh superman oh i'll be down to make that make that happen if dean wants to get on friday night tights we can make that happen for sure uh um, that's a huge friday show they do dean i don't know if you're yeah. familiar with me it's an awesome show that it's a yeah. fun house so. okay hit what? another record was another record was look like eighteen thousand people or something like live was, all man. right man uh but yeah most definitely um i say we make that happen i think that's a that's an obvious so i i, I love to make that happen uh Tip Plateau with a uh, seven Canadian says, yo, Ripper, hey, man, am I still good to get Alpha Core? Don't want to miss that. Oh, yeah, of course. You can still get it just because it's starting to go out or fulfillment has started. does not mean that you can't get it. You can go to Ripperverse.com, go to the campaign page, and go uh, get in um, on that. Okay, we have uh, Antoine Haynes with a five says, hey, Gabe, I forwarded it. Uh, what? Haven't you in the studio, Gabriel? Cannon, Nick. Well, I can't. I don't know what's going on here. Nick Cannon's bro wants to. Nick Cannon's brother wants to talk. Doing some work with you. I once told him about All American Lawman. Oh, okay. Okay. Is he talking about Nick Cannon? Like, is that he? Nick Cannon? You know, he's saying Gabriel oh. Cannon is Nick Cannon's bro. I guess. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Gabe. I forward. Hey, and oh, uh, okay, Antoine, you have my email, right? We've been talking email and we've been talking Twitter. Write me again on Twitter, or whatever. I'm unsure what this message is. Sorry, bud. So, but it sounds interesting. There you go. Uh, she's sitting with 33 months as one of the best criminal minds episodes involved, uh, involved Dean Kane as a chronic gambler. Good Lord, does he kill it? Literally and metaphorically, I'm scooping this comic easily held to good entertainment. And shout out, that's uh, one of my my wife's, my wife and our and myself favorite show. We actually, uh, while we were both sick, we're going through Evolution, uh, which is like uh, Criminal Minds Evolution 16 and 17, I think are the two two uh, uh, seasons that they that those technically go. We've watched all of that. Uh, like that might be between that and maybe NCIS. I've watched more of that than I have of any other fucking show. <laughs> um, uh, and, 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 on the show, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So, can, I ask, can I ask Dean a question? I think this would be interesting because I bet since he's a TV and movie guy, they always ask him about what he did, but no one ever asked him, what is your favorite show, Dean? Oh, wow. Well, it's impossible not to say, you know, Lois and Clark because okay. you spent four years doing that all day, every day, and you have so much time invested in the character. That was great fun. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed my, so I enjoyed going on other shows and making appearances on the shows just to see how their mechanics work. See how the actors are work. See how the they work within their crew and their characters and so on and so forth. When it's a show that's been on that long, you know, like Criminal Minds or or or, or like you know a CSI or SUV, which I went on as well. SVU, sorry, we always made the joke about SUV. Uh, <laughs> Law and Order SVU. Um, Richard Belzer, rest in peace, was always like, yeah, it's about crimes that happen inside an SUV. That's what it is. No, but I mean like a, a special victims unit, like going on there. And, and seeing that work with them it was great. Also, I got away with it on that one, which is very rare. Um, oh, wow. But it's okay. great fun to come in and guest on these shows because they're juggernauts. Uh, like Eric said, he watched them all the time and sees it. So it was really cool for me to get on there and go, oh, okay, this is, the, this is what this set looks like. This is what it feels like to go to work here every day. This is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I got arrested by Ice-T. Yeah. Who could say that? Yeah, true. Not many people right. say that. There you I go. Mean, Awesome. We were on the show, but whatever. I got a rest of ice tea, man. <laughs> Put your hands where I can see them. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna let you take that up with him, Gabriel. <laughs> what a name with a PYG 25,000 says, yo, help me uh propaganda Gundam to release his demo played on FNT a while ago. It's my birthday. Oh, so you want him to release that? So is Corona for the night. Cheers. Uh, I haven't seen that. Uh, I know some people have mentioned that because, you know, I'm a, obviously a guy in a, in a freaking metal band. So people that, that bring that up. But I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Gundam rock out with his uh, with his um, uh, band and whatnot. So I got to check that out. East Coast Tossy Boy, 15 months, says, yo, Gabe, uh, how's that F-14 A-10 team up coming? Uh, not sure. I mean, we have an A-10 Thunderbolt in the comic. I'm not sure about the F-14, but the A-10... We wreck shop with that thing. We start this thing off uh, with a bang, this comic. You're going to love it. That what big, ugly mean? plane can do some damage, man. Yeah. Can I love watching videos best, on man. YouTube. Uh, just me, just evaporating things. With that cannon. Yeah. There you go. 
Okay, I'm going to fly through these. Brandon, again, what's up, says, I know firsthand he was referring to what you were referring to uh, earlier, Gabe. Ooh. Says, Gabe cares about the fans. I'm backing him every damn time. Humble. I thank God that I can uh, touch people's lives. I don't know what else to say. It's very humbling. And uh, I don't know. Just thank you very much, Brandon. I appreciate it sincerely. So That's what's up. East Coast Toasty Boy says, holy shit, Dean Kane. Just casually here. Yeah, <laughs> Superman himself just <laughs> Kidding. Hanging out with us, I'm hanging with off. you guys, man. That's right. <laughs> I'm honored to be here. That's what's up. I got to finally meet Dean um, at uh, San Diego Comic Con, but I don't know if I've talked about a lot of that publicly, man. It's just a fucking all around awesome dude, man. It was, uh, I had a blast. I had an absolute blast there, man, and it was cool to 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 have Dean there, and obviously with with Gabe being as accommodating as he was for myself and the rest of our team there, man, it was just all around, all around great time. Man. It, it was around. really fun. It yeah. was really fun there. Very it was good. Awesome. It was an so, honor. I think I have uh go ahead. I'm sorry. I think I have a great picture so people can see real quick. Oh, here it is. Uh, we have a uh, Rhapsody with a five says, uh, Dean, have you talked to angel studios for distribution for that new movie? Uh, says hell, the fellowship and hell, the Riververse. Yeah, Angel Studios has done some really interesting stuff, obviously, with Sound of Freedom and some of their other projects they're coming out with. Uh, I don't know if it's um, right up their line or not. I mean, we're having some conversations with some people who know Angel, the Angel Studios folks, and so uh, they've done some great work. I'm always interested, uh, but we, we're not in talks about Little Angels for them yet. Uh, maybe we will get in, in talks, and maybe that'll happen. Maybe maybe you're doing it, Rhapsody. Maybe you're going to put it together and make it happen for us. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And yes, there is a picture with all of us here. Uh, That's right. Yes. I'm, the, I'm the tall one of the group. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah Look at my cool. face. I'm 26 pounds heavier. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this. Does anyone it. have any more Gabe, donuts? Not all about about you? You? Look at the two guys on the end. Yeah, exactly. Jeez, those guys <laughs> on the end. They look good, man. I'm embarrassed. And there's Jericho. Yeah, yeah that's you a got, great Jericho Green. Jericho He's Green. amazing. Follow him on Jericho YouTube. Green. He's so funny. So funny, but it was a great time at San Diego Comic Con, and uh, people did not want you there, Eric. <laughs> no, they were not, uh, they, they did not want us there. There was uh, there's some problems, but uh, and, oh well, they had to get yeah, over it, <laughs> yeah. And they're gonna have to cry again because I got my uh, to make sure I cover my address, but I got the letter from uh, Comic Con telling me my booth is back again this year. So there you go, we'll see you again, right. folks. We'll you see people who didn't want Eric there would have had to go through those four, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of beef right there in that shot. I don't know really take that on. A lot of meat. A lot of I meat. Love <laughs> so I like I your shirt it. in that one too, Gabe. <laughs> oh, that the, my Fafo shirt. You can get those on my website, bigmancommerce.com. You can get that right now today. So uh, absolutely. That's, there you uh, go. Fool around and find out. I cleaned it up for the kids. Yeah, yeah you did. So. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> um, uh, still leg of history with a two says, be blessed, Dean and Eric. Uh, and Gabe, proud of you all. Hey, appreciate you still leg of history, man. Love to know that you're doing well, my friend. Uh, we have Video Fox of the Tenses. Welcome, Dean. We met at Fanboy Expo in Knoxville a few years ago and express appreciation uh, for your Fox appearances. Uh, nice to see you here. Happy to be here, Video Fox. Happy as a clam. Uh, Graf Webb with a two cent. He says it every, every time. Uh, it says hashtag cancel Disney. Plus, our Brown Joe the two says got the short box. Gonna need a new one. So yeah, I get on that. We'll see what we can do about making an all new one. We won't we won't reprint the one that we have, but um, we will maybe make another one for you guys. Uh, Jay's secret racism says what a, what a um, one month says Dean. What are your thoughts on popular screenwriting competitions? Uh, do you think they try to choose woke writers instead of real storytellers? You know, I'm not real familiar with those competitions. I mean, obviously, I'm a screenwriter. I've written about 40 scripts and gone through that. I don't know what they choose. It would probably make sense, given this current climate, that they would be looking for woke, you know. Um, but but there's, a, again, as we were talking about on this show, I think that uh, that that chapter is coming to a close because people want great stories, real stories, and they don't want to be fed this pablum of, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you should think everybody's oppressors, oppressors or oppressed people or whatever it is, I think they're going to go back to the, the stuff we've been talking about. And so if that's what they're doing right now, I hope that changes soon. There you go. Uh, Prince Cortez with a 20 says, Dean Kane. oh my God, my mom and I loved watching your Superman TV show. Wishing you the best, Eric. He says, uh, Eric, do well, what you are doing is so amazing. Appreciate you. 
uh, bringing so many good people together. Uh, dreams come true. Thankful for you. Huge fan. Hey, I appreciate you so much um, as well. Uh, yeah, man, no, this is awesome. I mean, me just doing what it is that I, I'm i doing, man, is, you know, link myself up with some absolute fucking legends, right? Like, I mean, I, the fact that we, we talking about Alpha Core right now, that's being rolled by one of the most prolific writers of all time and Chuck freaking Dixon, right? Uh, and then now doing a stream like with Dean, this is stuff, this is amazing to me. This is kind of a trip. Because again, considering the era that I came up, Dean was my my Superman. I was reading Chuck Dixon's books, um, and to be able to uh, you know shoot shit with these guys has been just been amazing, man. It's been a wonderful experience, man. I'm glad. Obviously, we finally was able to get Dean uh, over here as well as Gabe. But big shout out to Gabe for making that make making that connect. I mean that that's why this happened, and that's what this whole thing has done, right? It's like. We're introducing each other to to other folks, and then we end up collaborating and make something memorable, man. And uh, it, it's just a fun, fun experience. Fun Dean, experience. What is that, uh, Dean? I, I think it was a Frederick Douglass quote that you told me about working with anyone to do. What was it? Do you know it off the top? I'm putting you on the, the spot. It says, oh, I, will, I will unite with anyone to do good and with no one to do bad. And that's so, it, Eric. That's why I unite you and me and Jericho and Dean and like, and you guys hooked me up with this guy. And like, I'll I'll give anyone a chance. And then they show me they're not a so great person. Okay, talk to you later. Nothing personal, but uh, but awesome people. I want to stick with them and grow stuff with them because we can't do it alone. You I know, agree. As creatives, we cannot. No, you can't do this alone. And then uh, uh, and then to the fans, you are like you're you're the other half of this. When you back this stuff, it's the only reason it happens. If we yeah. made all these awesome comics and then no one bought them. We don't have to go find other jobs, you know, next year. So thank you guys, because you're part of the team too. You are part of Big Absolutely. Man Comics. You're part of Ripperverse. You're part of all of it. Thank you so much. 100%. So. 100%. Appreciate that. Big shout out to uh, Prince Cortez with that 20, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Green haired, anti liberal, uh, <laughs> one of the first uh, cosplayers of that character right there, and Yaira, and also the first character, the character that you see in the kind of a uh, bottom bottom left there in Ingrid Valdez. She uh, caught, I didn't get to see it in person, unfortunately, because I was not at Anime Matsuri this uh, this past year, but she was there dressed as uh, Ingrid. So that's awesome. Says Dean and Gabe, thanks for both of you coming onto the stream with Eric. You're both wonderful, and I'll be getting a book or two. Just have to decide which covers. That's always a good problem, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah that right. awesome. You know, if, if you can't uh, decide and you have to buy them all, I mean, I, I guess mean, I'll allow it. I'll yeah. allow it. You know? Why not? Why not? Um, Alec Baldwin's finger with the <laughs> oh, with, the 20, with the 20 says, just ordered a signed copy. Keep the books coming. Oh, thank, thank you, God. Alec Baldwin's finger. And <laughs> I hope it turns around for you, man, because, you know. Whew. Ooh, yeah, don't put that finger where it shouldn't go. <laughs> uh, we have my man's Marcos of Riververse Comics team says, uh, Dean, such a legend, legend. Let's add him to the team. <laughs> I can't just collect everybody here at the Riververse. Uh, says, I, I remember watching a Superman as a kid along with my dad. I remember nice. an episode with Lex Luthor uh, when he lost his hair. It says, fun series back then. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's the thing, though. He watched it with his dad. They bonded, yeah. talked about the stuff. That's just cool as can be. To be a part of that memory in that childhood is just, it's such an honor for me. There you go. There you go. Uh, Inter Intergalactic Pirate Radio with a 10 says, Dean, what do you think about how superheroes and superhero comics have changed over the years? Is there anything you think needs to change uh, in the industry uh, or, or community? Well, if you've been watching this show for the last two hours, you'll know <laughs> yeah. a lot that needs to change. Um, and we have some great ideas for it, I believe. And I think that it would uh, it would help the superhero genre quite a bit. Um, not just not just in the films, obviously in the comics and 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 throughout. And that's that's what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing here, Intergalactic Pirate Radio. So um, they've done they've done they've they've turned uh, a certain way, and that's why they're losing so much money. That's why. What was the last one they just put out? Marvel, the the Marvels. Oh, Marvels. the Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah, Mar uh, the Marvels. Yeah, that was the last one they put out. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, looks like that might end up losing, like ultimately, like a a half a billion dollars. Um, which oh. is hey, you know, 
It's just the half hey. a bill. Come on. <laughs> uh, that's uh that's insane. But uh yeah, not doing too well. Not doing, not doing too well. well. Yeah, uh, to yeah. Uh uh Janine with a five. Uh appreciate that super sticker. Janine, I wish I could, J9. I wish so I could at, see that. Yeah, look at that. Picture. Look at that little avatar. Look, look at that avatar, man. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. I wish I could see that uh suit the actual super sticker. Unfortunately, uh StreamYard doesn't show it. Um yeah, here. super sticker. Yeah, but just says just says super sticker. But appreciate that. And that is an awesome picture. I'm sure that was an awesome memory there. Sweet. Uh, Shout out. We have uh Patrick with a five says, Dean, if the river version makes a video game, would you consider voicing a character or two? Absolutely. I would love to ally with Eric anytime. All he has to do is pick up that phone. There we and, go. Uh, I'm answering. Plus, he's got the Sasuke sisters in there now, too. And I'm telling you, the network's big, already big, there. It's, it's already there. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have a choice. Yeah, if exactly. the river makes a video game, I have to voice a character or two. <laughs> That's actually true. That is actually true. Yes. I love it. I hundred percent love it. Let's make it happen. Uh, we have uh Philip with the 14 says, uh, wonderful listening. Uh, just wanted to say God bless. Well, appreciate you, Philip. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, we have, I think sheep was, uh, trying to show us what the super sticker was. It's a, Oh, it's a lemon. That's uh has a trumpet. That's uh so I guess he's doing his thing. Okay, I see it now. Appreciate that, sheep. Thank you again for sending that to me. Uh Philip again, thank you for that. We got uh Joy with a five says, Merry Christmas to all and sending you joy to the world. From Appreciate Joy. You. I mean, if you joy. got it right directly from Joy, you heard you it there. Joy. We know she's is awesome. it the same joy from Twitter? I believe it is. It looks like her in that little yeah, that's joy. Yeah, she's see her all the time on there. Lovely, Shout lovely out joy. Man. Appreciate you, Joy. Uh, we have East Coast Toasty Boy with a five. Says Dean, if your Superman was teaming up with Batman, who is Batman? Would you want to make Ooh. a movie with? Which Batman? Uh, be, which Batman best works with your Superman? He's asking. Ooh, I gotta go back to like Michael Keaton. Okay. Ooh, I gotta go back to like Michael Keaton because he was the Batman, kind of right before Clooney came in. I guess Val Kilmer was in there too. But when when Clooney came in, I was shooting Superman. Actually, we were shooting Lois and Clark. He was shooting Batman. And I walked over one day. I don't think I was in the super suit, but I got to go over there. And George was in the Batman suit, but didn't have the head on. But Batman was doing a big fighting thing up there. And I was like, how come you've got a, you have a, he's like, that's the guy who does the flips. And that's the guy over there who does the kicks. There was like six Batman. I was like, why don't I have all these people? And uh, he's like, because you got to do it all. <laughs> had a great basketball game. It was a two on two. George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell, Batman and Robin. Okay. Versus me. And Justin Whalen, Jimmy Olsen. There you oh, go. Nice. Let's, let's put it this way. Okay. Superman okay. won. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's just put it I like the when you went up for a dunk, did he say like save Martha to like try to distract <laughs> you or something? That's his move. That's his go-to. That's it. Martha. Ah! You're like, where? Where's Martha? Oh. We, we we put it down to it pretty hard. Actually, the devil, he used to call me the devil on the court. Clearly wow. doesn't like body, he doesn't like contact. Like contact, doesn't like contact. Oh. I like what Derek Coleman said back in the 90s. You got six fouls. Use them. Use them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Coleman used six every game. Yeah. yeah no yeah. joke. Remember Charles Oakley, Derek? Oh, these guys were just. These guys are brutal, out. man. Those guys Look. are brutal, man. Yeah. It's a physical sport for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay. Where am I at? I think. Yeah, I got that right. Yeah. Oh, is it yeah. another super sticker? No, it's a different super sticker, is what it is. Oh. So. Appreciate that as two fives back to back. Thank you, Janine. Uh, from I can't Janine. See it, though. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't see this that super sticker, but appreciate unless that was the one that he had sent me. So shout out, Janine. I appreciate you so much for two super stickers. Antoine uh Haynes with a five says, My bad. I meant I'm, I'm oh. looking forward to having you in studio. Uh oh. Gabe okay. Cannon is Nick's bro and wants to meet. Gotcha. Eric oh, okay. 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 Uh also want. To get me in the studio, okay. Yeah, I, I okay. believe I believe Antoine is a local guy here. You okay, know what I, mean? I think he's a San Diego guy. If I remember, I've talked to. Him. I get a lot of private messages, but I'm pretty okay. sure I'm doing his podcast in a few weeks or something like that. Sorry, okay. Antoine. I don't. I got a lot of messages. I'm very busy, but uh, we'll get it right. Just make sure you message me. Okay. Cool. Cool. Oh yeah. Shout out, man. Um, will I be there this upcoming year? I, I'm. I haven't had any plans yet, but uh, I demand it. 
I demand that you're at my booth. Well, after his one reception go. last year, he can't say right. anything but yes. Yeah. yeah. To make yeah. them cry at least. I mean, not, you know, so. <laughs> okay. Fair we'll enough. Back together. Jericho will be back. Dean will be okay. back. We'll all be there. Why yeah, not? Get, Why get not? the whole it's crew. Okay. Time. Okay. Uh, Defendo 99 with a 10 says Dean came for live action Michael Copper or oh, Michael Copper character. I could see that. I could see that. Yes, I could 100 percent see see uh Dean and yeah, I could I could actually scarily see that. I could see that for sure. Maybe that's if something you that we Keanu Reeves instead of me. That's it. <laughs> you can only take I, so many of my roles. I, I'll be dead to you if I do that. <laughs> I understand. I, I, I promise you, I won't, I won't let it happen. I'll be like, no, sorry, Mr. Keanu. Actually, if you can get him, I, I mean, <laughs> there you hurt. go. <laughs> there you go. Uh Defendo 99, I appreciate that. Okay, we got Taryn the Black, 16 months is out, of course, legit. By the way, I wanted to thank Dean Kane for being the Superman I watched for my granny. And yeah, uh, uh, she had a thing. Well, yeah, all, they all did. They, they all, all, the, all the women's back in the gap did. So That's when uh, it's fun. It's like you walk out, you see this beautiful young woman. She's like, oh, my God, Dean Kane, my grandmother loved you. And you're like, oh, uh, so <laughs> I mean, I appreciate grandma, but dang. And I realized, you know, my son's 23. Yeah. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. I'll have all the women love. I'll take me. mom. I'll take grandma. I'm cool with whatever. I mean, I get uh, it. I get it. Poor Dean. Poor <laughs> Dean. <laughs> Barrett uh, X with nine months of our review. Alvacore number one on uh, Velvet Room Publishing. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, June Teku with the two says, found out he was my dad's Superman after watching uh, Bailey Bill. Bailey's billions. I love that. I played a a, a a dorky a dorky dude who could speak dogish. I could speak to dogs. Okay. Okay. It's a very sweet little movie. It okay. was a good little kids movie. That was fun. There you go. Uh Mad About Hatter with the five. Said so Dean Kane was my Superman growing up. I have to ask. I need a hero scene in episode one, uh, getting the suit. Anything you can share about it? I did a lot of changing and a lot of different suits to try to find the suit that fit. And it was just right. I remember that being a very tedious shoot because the camera was set and I just had to go change to another suit. A little Captain America like here, a little something else here. Uh, great sense of humor in that. And the fact that my mom was the one who made made the, the suit for the character. I thought that was really cool. That is awesome. Um, that was wonderful. You know, somebody says, I get a nice suit. I'm like, thank you. My mom <laughs> made it for me. I just thought that was a great, that's, that got that sense of humor to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also that loyalty to mom. And what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. You know, you tell me, somebody tells you, you, like, your mom made that 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 Texas Rangers hat that you have on. Who, who's going to mess with that? Yeah, you know exactly. what's going you know to happen next. Yeah. That looks stupid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now we got now we got other problems for sure. <laughs> now so. we got other problems. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I appreciate that, Mad Hatter. Uh, we got Koa Lee with a uh, 10 says, Eric is out here. Uh, talking and working with legends is a shame that he's still scamming people according to some folks <laughs> i can't wait for truth justice american way and american lawman hell i appreciate thank you, that. Thanks, uh, hey, and thank if, you. if nobody's booing you they don't boo nobody's right truth. i love that when i heard dion say that. i freaking love that Jeez. yeah did you know him at all dean you were because you were on the buffalo bills for a him. season so yeah, did I, you know? I never had a chance to meet dion would have oh. loved to but we would have, unless he was playing on offense, we wouldn't have really crossed paths. Or if he was well, that's true. not returning, you know, I total respect for him, a legend. But I would have loved to clean him out. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. I would that's, love to just catch him. That's what athletes do. With that kind of speed that he had, he just hit a Ooh. hole. I come from the other side, just get surprised out, blow stuff up. Yeah, and he would be like, he'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that hit. But <laughs> I didn't get that opportunity, and and um, he's in the Hall of Fame, and. Uh, I'm hanging here with the Riververse, so who wins that one? <laughs> yeah, who wins there? <laughs> yeah. I love that. I well, love we could that. go visit the Hall of Fame. You know, they'll That's let us right. Know, you know? <laughs> hey, you are an NCAA record holder for most interceptions in a season. I still hold right? two NCAA records. <clears throat> I broke it for season and for career, but then we only played 10 games a season right. in the Ivy League. That's all we could play. No postseason, no anything. Every else, you know, Rasheen Mathis broke my record for most interceptions in a single season, which was which was twelve. He broke it with fourteen, but he did it in I think fourteen games. Right. Um, he, also, I got to be honest, he was a corner, much more difficult for a corner to do it, and bless him for it. And he played in the league for a long time. 
great guy. But I remember speaking to him when I was playing Superman and he was on the cusp of breaking it. And he was like, well, Mr. Kane. And I was like, stop it, man. I'm still <laughs> in my 20s. Come yeah. on. Um, but so cool. Such a great thing. And so, but I do hold two uh, NCAA records for football. Football, what is the FCS? Football Championship Subdivision, which used to be 1AA. Right. So most interceptions in a single season per game average, which was 1.2 per game. And most per, per career average. I still hold those two. And they're still in the record books. You can find them. I mean, it's a little tiny writing, but it's in there. It's in there. Uh, and that helmet, it. is that a legit Princeton helmet? Or is that a, is that yours from? Let's see. That one here is Princeton, but it's not when I was playing. They sent me that one because we didn't have the, because you know that Michigan, the Wolverine, the ears back and everything. That originally was a Princeton Tiger Oh, um, a, a design. And it went to Michigan. Then we, we took it back. We had it just, we were just the pumpkin heads, man. We had just a big, big orange <laughs> helmet with a black stripe. That sucked uh, compared to what they have now. But that is my actual, there is my Buffalo Bills helmet right there. Nice. And how about yeah. that win over KC last night, huh? All right. Uh, or two nights. It was, it was Denver Broncos, one game out of first place. That's For right, now. Denver. That's Somehow. Right. For now. That's right. <laughs> hey, didn't the Denver Broncos beat up the Buffalo Bills on Monday, the 13th of November? They did take them this year. I do remember that. I do remember Much that. Much to my chagrin. <laughs> I'd rather lose in November and win in December, though. True enough. True enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, we have uh, Brett seven seven one eight with a ten says or three signed All Americans a T and two Alpha cores. Shout out to Daniel Jeez. Superman is awesome. Met Terry backstage after the show she did after Lois and Clark. Uh, she is a lovely lady. Says is, uh, Brett, you didn't get a chance to kiss her, so you don't you don't have that experience. <laughs> I'm sorry because it's worthwhile. Just shut his mic off, please, Eric. <laughs> That's enough talking about kissing Terry Hatch. That is enough. <laughs> it was outrageous. It's it outrageous. Have to do. All right. And you got you got paid to kiss her. Yes. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. yes, he did. He uh, did. I did. <laughs> a serious man with five says, "I backed uh, DC. Uh, well, the book Dean Kane." Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, All American Lawman says, uh, "Back in August, he says, right yes. after fulfillment." On true justice in the American way. Looking forward to it. Uh, keep it the great work. Hail the Iron Age. Appreciate that. A serious Thank you, man. Serious man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, again, Jay Secret Racism with a two says congratulations to Disney on all <laughs> on all their failures. Oh. Uh, I appreciate that. We got Mark Zimmer with a 10 says I agree with both you uh, and that umbrella guy on the state of comic book industry. On the state of the comic book industry, number one, the industry needs to make economic changes. Two, they need to capture in heart, the hearts and minds of young ones. You both are spot on, says uh, Marcus Henry with a 10. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was referring to um, a tweet between myself and um, um, that umbrella guy. Gabby with a five said, Dean, come back to the UK for another convention. Happy holidays from Scotland. Cheers, Gabby. I will for sure. I'm over in Europe all the time. There you go. Uh, Jelani Wood with a 10 says, Dean, been a fan since the 90s. Eric and Gabe, I've been a fan of yours for the last four or five years after discovering you both. Surreal to see you all together. Best wishes to all of you uh, and all that you do. Well, I appreciate Thank that. You. Cheers, Jelani. Thank you very Thank much. You much. And I, pre- I appreciate that, man. Uh, big time. All right, two more. We got Janine with a two says, appreciate you guys so much. God bless. God bless you. Again, and that is 12, 12 total from Janine. So shout out to Janine with those two super stickers from earlier. Uh, and MSK content entertainment with the two says order all American uh ordered, I guess already. Uh ship estimated date, date month. He says he's looking at the end of March, right? Right, right, right. We said by the end of the winter that this winter, thing yeah. should be printed, start shipping them out by the end of the winter. So that's t- if you want to be precise, I think it's March 21st this year, but you know what I mean. Well, uh, yeah. I already talked to the printer. I know when I need to get the artwork and the lettering done to get it to my printer to get it on time. If you have Truth, Justice, American Way, you know the quality of the books I put out. They're gorgeous, beautiful. I wouldn't settle for anything less. So I work with my printer here, uh, San Diego Printing. They're awesome. They do amazing work. So, yeah, I've already been emailing them, getting my prices and all that stuff. So we're we're in shape. And uh, just so you know, we're up to page 80 in pencils, 80 out of 114, and color is almost to 70. So we're doing fantastic. We're 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 cruising. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be awesome. So there you go. Astro Zombie says so awesome to have you uh three gentlemen chopping it up. Can uh get Dean 
to commit to a Riververse Studios voice work. He already did. He just did it. He, he there you go. That's so, right. So also Alpha Core number one is sick. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you so much. And man, look, if, if if should any opportunity arise and we can work with Dean, you know I'm gonna make the shit happen. Like, don't even worry about that. That's an inevitable thing. So um, hey Zeus, I appreciate that becoming a gifted or getting gifting a uh, membership. I appreciate that. Okay, so now that I've flown through all these, if you don't mind, just really quick, Gabe. Yes, sir. One last pitch for Dean Kane. All American lawman, guys. Uh, back this book today, you're going to absolutely love it. Uh, Chris <laughs> Tanaka, this is the character that Dean is playing in this sort of movie turned into a graphic novel, and uh, maybe we'll turn it back into a movie someday if you guys support it enough. But uh, anyway, he's a man of action, of adventure. This thing has um family things, it has bravery things, it has everything that Dean has been doing as an actor for the last many many years <laughs> and everything Don't that i love doing Don't in college say it. <laughs> it just, you know it's, it's a couple decades that's very respectable few and, decades. Uh, several <laughs> right and he and he has to take down the, uh, the the uh the biggest most corrupt cartel in the world his sister's in peril the world is in peril if they keep spreading their awful drugs and violence around and it's just it go, it's a classic throwback to that 80s and 90s action beautifully illustrated by akion colored by myself will be lettered by myself but uh, uh, Dean has really helped me cook up something amazing here by creating this character and letting me run wild with uh, script ideas and this and that. And we have awesome promo art right there on the page and awesome books. We have four different covers. We have a 20, I think a 28 page art book. that's just raw black and white inks from the illustrator. So you can really see that. And it'll have notes from myself, the illustrator, Akeon and Dean of some of our thoughts behind the scenes of making this book. That's available too. That's all awesome. And then uh, three awesome shirts. And uh, I love the Dean Kane Dia de los Muertos shirt. I think yeah. that's very funny because it's it favorite. has this smoldering picture of Dean in the advertisement. So, uh, <laughs> my goodness. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you click through on that, uh, Eric, it'll uh, you, we can enlarge it and uh, look at him in all his glory there. Look at the look at those <laughs> eyes. Yeah, look yeah. at those eyes. He just wants you to come to him. But the character ends up wearing that shirt like throughout the second half of the book. So I thought it'd be fun for maybe maybe we'll see some cosplayers in this eventually, you know. Please, that I can't wait for that to happen. Right. Yeah. But yeah, if you love 80s and uh 90s action adventure, when I first pitched this idea to Dean, the movie he said to me was, Hey, you like you ever seen Romancing the Stone? And I was like, Oh my god, that was like one of my top 10 movies when I was young. Like, I love that. Um, with uh, Jack Colton and uh, Joan Wilder. I think it's fantastic. So that was really the flavor we wanted to go through here. That male and female, like side, kind of sidekicky thing together with the tough leading man and the sexy lady, but she's also smart and spunky and the awful bad guys and the organized crime. We're just giving you all that. Explosions, helicopters, crazy drug lords, but there's family. There's a huge uh, uh, part of the story is about the relationship between Kristanaka and his son. And there's a big thing, thing about the theme of the story there and the love between fathers and sons and family and stuff like that. And I think guys like Eric, Dean, and myself, that's a big part of our lives. When we talk about being athletes, I, I played football in high school, but then I coached it forever. My son, their high school one state, I helped coach my son forever. Dean, obviously, being a pro ball player, a college player, and, and then Eric, you're a Division One athlete too. I think a lot of that masculinity we learned about being brave and being strong uh, and uh, I, I tried to write that into the script. There was a when I was seven years old, I was on a soccer team that my mom was coaching, and the goalie got injured. And my mom told me I had to be the goalie the next day. And I cried and cried that. And I said, I don't want to be the goalie. If I let goals in and we lose, it's going to be my fault. And everyone will be mad. She made me do it. And the next day, and I'm a I was a huge kid then. I'm a tall guy now. <laughs> I blocked every goal. We shut the other team out. And I'll never forget that. I was talking to my mom about this story last week, and I wrote that into the book. Something very similar in it about the father and son relationship and being scared and doing something anyway. And I really wanted themes like that because I think so many people out there, they're defeated, they're lost, they're demoralized by this tough world, this tough time we're going through. And I want people to realize you can be more than you ever dreamed. And, and when that little thing happened to me playing soccer as a kid, I never have forgotten it. that I was terrified, but an adult believed in me and I did it anyway. So I, I want to put important things like that in these stories because the helicopters and the explosions and the sexy babes, that's all sugar to get the medicine down. You know what I mean? To lift people up with a beautiful story. So I'll, I'll quit. I, I'd go on forever, but uh, that's what we want here. We want you to just be thrilled and have so much fun when you read this. So please back it today. Man, there you go. There you go. There I is. appreciate that. 
again guys it is pinned uh, right there in the comment section once the video is live after this i'll be sure to make sure it's uh at the top of the description as well so you guys can take a look at that but go back it yeah i'm co-signing everybody here is co-signing it so please go get in that because uh we want to see what this uh you know could possibly manifest itself into just considering how sick this this looks so go check it out if you have not um already what i'm going to do is fly through these because we got a bunch more right after um i finished i think that that one uh of course we got that one that was well it's right after this one okay so marcus said i used to like dean kane before all this <laughs> after talk uh, that's why appreciate. it's in green green for envy <laughs> uh, i hear right. you marcus i wouldn't like me either for that <laughs> says appreciate you three legends i appreciate you just know that. dean turned to the director was like i don't think we got that take right we should do it again you know like, just, just, give it another yeah, just bring me some more chapstick i'm getting a little chapped with all these takes you know Actually, it wasn't getting chat. Not bad. Didn't. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Soft, Gabriel. Soft. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Jay, secret racism again. What if I said, are those uh, Yaira short boxes going to come into tissue and backlights? Who said I was going to be putting out a Yaira short box anyway? Uh, this is asking on behalf of As Ryan and Jay. Uh, I never said, never confirmed that there will be a short box with uh, the Yaira release. Uh, but we will have some cool uh, merchandise items. That will be released alongside that mad about Hatter with a five says, Mr. Dean Kane. How was it on that Smallville episode? Ripper, thank you for everything. You truly changed my life, especially in 2021. You know what I mean? Hey, I appreciate your brother. Yeah, well, uh, the, the small uh, I, I, that I would let you handle that. That was a big deal. Changing somebody's life in 2021. I don't want to overstep that. No, okay. that I was gonna look. People say that definitely with 2020 and 2021, and you know, I was talking about everything that was crazy happening in the world. And a lot of people came to my channel by then, and uh, they used definitely my show for Canon Take when I was doing that every day, which is about to return, by the way. Um, it, it, that was big for them, um, help them get through it because that was a damn crazy time. So, uh, mad about how I appreciate you, appreciate everybody here again. A lot of our followers came from that little window. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys follow me through the Ripperverse stuff as well. So I appreciate you. But yeah, the Smallville episode. Um, what, how fun. was that? How was that? Great fun because they were in season seven. Those guys have been cranking it for a long time. Tom Welling, one of the nicest guys out there. Um, Rosenbaum, totally insane and wonderful actor and great guy. So it was great to step on a show again. It was like going on the Law and Order shows or, you know, or going on Criminal Minds. They had it down to a science. They just did things just, you know, in shorthand. They were fantastic. And it's great fun to walk in there and go, oh, this is this world. Okay. This is interesting. And, and it's just great fun to experience it. Man, there you oh. go. Okay. Well, um, I think I got through <clears throat> all of those. Chat, again, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We've been over two hours, actually. So it's been wow. a crazy, crazy long stream. Time flies, man, when you are. Uh, having a blast, man. Again, guys, we have the pin coming. I appreciate you guys that have supported the stream, but please go if you have not already. Go support Dean Kane's All American Lawman with uh, Gabe El Taib um, as well. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that have been showing a lot of love for Alpha Core. Um, it's been a crazy release, man. Our third book, third million dollar campaign. What can we say? It's just been something that's again, I'm living a freaking dream right now, and now I'm talking to Superman, so everything's going great, uh, for me. But it's been awesome to, have, of course, have you here, Dean. Uh, yeah, that's something that's kind of uh overdue, man. I can't wait for us, you know, us to chop it up about some ideas and uh, ways that we can certainly collaborate, man, because I know that know the audience wants a lot of that. Uh, but no, seriously, man, uh, Gabe, I appreciate you making the connect as well. And I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate everything you've done for the Riververse, man. You've been there from day one when it was right. just us. Uh, and, uh, man, I appreciate everything it is that you you do as well, man. So Thank you guys, you. I, I appreciate the opportunity. And I do think I've been seeing the chat going crazy. They want Dean Friday Night Tights. They want him with I can all, make, your, we can make that all your buddies, Nerd Rodic, all those guys. I think Dean, I think you'd love those guys, Dean. They're like they're not they're like me, they're just not as tall or strong, <laughs> you know. You uh, are, but they're, but they're cool. You are, so, yeah. <laughs> you know. Hey, I got that leaping ability from leaping the turds here in California, yeah, yeah. so you know, you're a little more athletic, more agile. <laughs> I, I respect that. Uh, but no, we for sure can make that happen. We can get we can get Dean on our FNT, that wouldn't be any problem as long as he's down to make it happen. We could 
we can get him uh, on that. I know everybody would would 100 percent love that. Uh, but no, seriously, Dean, man, I appreciate you joining, man. This has been a been a wonderful opportunity, man, uh, and experience, man, to be able to chop it up and, and, and chat with you about everything, man, that you have going, and uh, obviously with the work that you're doing with Dean, just everything, man. It's been it's been a been a wonderful experience, man. I appreciate you joining us. God bless it. Thank you. Honored to be here with you. Love what you've done. So happy for all your success. I hope for ten times as much success in the coming years. You deserve it. You've earned it. Um, and you put in the time, like we said earlier, you know, it doesn't just happen. You were, you were not an overnight success. My yeah, appreciate um, that, success, man. Success came when it, when it needed to and, and uh, um, all that hard work. And it's just, it's awesome to see it happen to great people. So appreciate it. Thanks you. for having us on. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you so much again, guys. Pinned comment. You can go uh, support Dean Kane's uh, you're an American lawman, man. Go, go support that if you have not already. We are going to get out of here. We've been live for a little over two hours. This is going to remain live, so don't worry about it. If you came in halfway, this won't be behind the, um, the the uh, like a membership wall or anything like that. We want everybody to see this so they can go support this work. And I think there's just an overall great conversation anyway. So uh, I don't know when I will be back. We'll see. We'll uh, be back um, maybe tomorrow at some point. I, of course, we got to the nice main event, one of our biggest shows through the week there. Maybe we can get Dean on, on uh, uh, that at some point later. Uh, as well i think that would be a really really cool show um they they would absolutely love that so but yes thank you guys for tuning in chatting with us this has been a wonderful experience but we are going to get out of here until next time y'all be easy and uh yeah peace out